my lovely, lovely imps. It is time. It's time after so long. We have been wandering in the wilderness, lost in the desert of content. A drought and plagues have fallen upon us, but finally today I come bearing you the golden tablets of Drama Mama content. That's right. At long last, we have an update that is worthy of doing a Drama Mama segment on. Now, if you've never seen Drama Mama, if you're a newcomer, press subscribe immediately, of course, and of course, like the video. But just so that you don't feel out of place, Drama Mama, is a little special section of my show where we talk about some sort of broader internet drama. You know, uh, usually we try to focus on something that's big and impactful, that affects a lot of people, that people can actually learn from. And we dive deep. We go in, we get all the receipts, we talk all about it, we have a discussion afterwards. These are my long form videos the in Drama Mama investigations are the meatiest drama coverage that you'll ever see, okay? We don't do that crappy, oh my God, did you hear what they said or whatever? We don't do that. We do an investigation. We get in, we get you the information so that you're not out of the loop, so that you can learn something from some of the nonsense that goes on on the internet. That is Drama Mama, and that is what you are here for today. And today, we are doing an update to a drama mama that we've been covering for a while, which is, of course, the James Summerton situation. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I have a part one video on this, and I recommend you go check it out. I'm plopping it in chat right now, and it will be in the description of the video um, when this video goes up as a segment on YouTube and isn't a part of my live stream. Um, so check the description if you haven't seen it. The first section of our Drama Mama investigation into James Summerton um, started uh, sort of following up to a video by a very, very uh, popular and accomplished YouTube creator by the name of H. Bomber Guy. H. Bomber Guy did the, the mountain of receipts when it comes to the James Summerton situation. H-Bomber guy exposed James Summerton on an unbelievable level, the likes of which we have rarely seen on the internet. And the receipts were massive. In my video on this, we followed up after H-Bomber guy's massive nuke, nuke went off on James Summerton, and we reacted to and analyzed and followed up on the claims made in James Summerton's first apology. Now, some of you listening right now might go, wait a minute, he had a first apology? That's right, he did actually have a first apology. And what we're reacting to today is actually the second apology, the squeakquel, the re is what we're reacting to today, my lovely imps. So if you haven't seen the first one, if you haven't seen the reaction and the ana analysis of the first now deleted and hidden apology from back a couple months ago, you should go click that link and go check it out. But if you're ready to dive in once again to the mess, the viper's nest of James Summerton's plagiarism allegations and his apologies therein, well, that's what we're doing today. You see, Two days ago, James Summerton uploaded a video which he titled, A Measured Response. Now that's a very funny title to do because of course, um, that is a riff off of H Bomber Guy's format for naming his videos. H Bomber Guy's, H Bomber Guy does a measured analysis, a measured etc. That's like H Bomber Guy's kind of his brand, which is, if it was anything else, it would be, you know, it would be like a nod or like a funny reference. But given that this is an apology for plagiarism allegations of a massive scale, copying the titling format is, it's, it doesn't, 
in my opinion, it doesn't come off very well. Okay, that comes off as very cringe to me, which is a tough, a tough start. Now today on this drama moment, we're going to try and do our best to withhold judgment until the end of the apology. But given that we've already reacted to one apology that mysteriously disappeared already, it's going to be a little hard for us to not be at least a tiny, tiny bit biased going into this. But I want to invite us all to do our best to try and take this apology as it is to the best of our ability. Even though I know that's kind of impossible given that this is the second apology and this one took four months to put together and it kind of... It kind of just comes off immediately uh, like a giant attempt to make up for how bad the last one was, which was probably a more organic response. But we'll find out, shall we? We'll find out. Let's do this. Without any further ado, we are now going to react to James Summerton's A Measured Response. I guess I don't really need to do much more of a summary. Let's just get right into it. Let's do it. Let's do this. James Summerton, A Measured Response, uploaded two days ago. Content warning, discussion of self-harm from 28... 28- uh, oh, one. whoa, whoa. I thought I had... <laughs> Yikes. I got a... I thought I had paused it. Whew. Okay. Let's go back there real quick. Discussion of self-harm from 2808... To 3004. Alright, let's do this. And then there's your content warning. I'm not going to remember that timestamp, so you're just going to have to bear with me. If you can't handle the discussion of self harm right now, you can tune out or wait. It'll be sometime around this timestamp. Uh, just a disclosure, this video is monetized, but revenue from it... Bad start. Bad start. Uh, just a disclosure, this video is monetized, but revenue from it will be sent along to HBomberGuy's team to be dispersed to the people whose work I plagiarized. Uh, if... HBomberGuy. This was from earlier today. I'm curious if James Summerton has actually reached out to you or your team about the funds from his measured response video. H Bomber Guy says he has not. He has. That is a very bad start. Bad start. Let's do this. His team won't accept it. I'll be making monthly donations to Wikipedia and Trans Lifeline going forward. Uh, you may have also noticed that if Huh? What? 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 Why Wikipedia and Trans Lifeline? How would you fucking reach out to the people you stole from? You know who you stole from. H-Bomber guy already outlined who you stole from. Reach out to them. What the fuck? Oh my god. Let's, Two of my past videos have gone up on the channel again, and revenue from those as well will also be sent along with the revenue from this video. Over the last couple of months, I've been getting in touch with the people who I plagiarized to apologize one-on-one -on -one instead of a mass apology. It's a bit difficult because many of them- Too loud, too loud, goddammit. Let's do this. There we go. That should be good. Too loud. Have public email addresses, so I'm still working on it, but it is a top priority of mine. I've heard back from a few of them, and they were actually incredibly nice, um, accepting my apology and just imploring me to do better in the future. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's so goddamn awesome. You reached out to a handful of the people that you stole from and they begged you to keep making content just to do it better in the future? Holy, is, th can this possibly be? We're two, we're one minute in and this is already coming off as worse than the last one. How is that even possible? No, yeah, where are the screen? Let's see it. Somebody should have been willing to go on the record. Let's fucking see it. I 
I want to thank them publicly for that. There's plenty that I haven't heard back from, and I completely understand that. In many cases, uh, I wouldn't want to talk to me either. I also want to apologize to my audience, though. You trusted me to be a good representative of the queer community, and I was not that. I tried to be. I tried to be a voice for every member of the queer community, but that was a fail. Why would you try to do that? Why would you try to be a voice for... Okay, that's a nitpick. Let's move. Let's move on. Never before it even started. I'm a cis, white, gay man. No matter how much I try to be a good spokesperson, I can never really truly understand the life experiences of other far more put upon members of the queer community. This is one of the reasons that I would use their own words, but I should have made it very clear. Your Honor, I sat my gay ass down and listened. Listen, if he'd been listening to the queer community, this fucking haircut would have never happened, all right? Let's just be real. Let's be 100% right now, okay? One hundo. That that's what I was doing. I never, ever thought that I was the only voice out there, as some have said. But being a cis white man, I thought I might be able to win over some people who wouldn't otherwise listen. Wait, he's doing the debate bro thing. Oh my God. We, the first, we have, the, we have the first example in history of a video essayist breaking down, the, bringing out the debate bro. Well, you know, I wanted to use my position to be able to bring over people who might, who might not listen otherwise to somebody like you. Oh my God. This is legendary! Okay. This is... Are we sure that this wasn't like a like an AI-generated James Summerton by somebody who hates James Summerton? It can't be. Not even an AI could think of something this heinous and goofy. Let's continue. Unless it was someone who looks and sounds just like them. And so I tried speaking for everyone. Wait a second, looks and sounds just like them. You bungled the argument. No, 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 no. It's the argument is that you're, it, they wouldn't listen to somebody who looks like them, not sounds like them. If you sound like them, you are them. If you look and sound like an alt-right person, you're an alt-right. Oh my God, this is amazing. How is this so, we're two and a half minutes in. This is a goof. This is a gag. This is, this is rapscallionry. What is this? And this was a horrible mistake. What I thought was being inclusive ended up leading to a lot of people feeling left out and even offended. This fell upon Nick as well as a non-binary person on the ace spectrum. They wanted to include asexuality and non-binary representation in our videos, but because Nick's experience is not universal, there is what? no universal experience. People felt that we were delegitimizing. Okay, we have to pause here for a second. I want you all to remember that in the last video that I did, okay, not that James Summerton did, in my Drama Mama coverage, which you can go watch, just search Drama Mama James Summerton, okay, and you'll find it. But in that video, we read Nick's official response to all of this, which was basically to say, no, that's not how this worked. So he's doing it again. This is a genuine, this is, this is truly just a reboot of the previous apology. This is the same song and dance. He just added more identity qualifiers at the beginning. He's doing like a we see you, we hear you. At the beginning of this video, oh my god. And also, is that because they made a video where they bungled talking about asexuality and now he's trying to blame that on Nick, 
who can't really speak for himself because he's not involved in this. Uh, this is pathetic. This is pathetic. Still lying. Still lying. Own experiences because we focused on Nick's, and I apologize for that. And I'm sure that Nick does as well. Um, I'd also like to... Nick made a statement about this. Once again, which you can go see us, we read the entire statement. I do not believe that Nick would sign off on this as you just implied he would. In fact, I strongly believe that Nick... In fact, I know Nick explicitly denounced you for your horrible first apology, and you're repeating mistakes from the first apology right now. Extend a personal apology to Jesse Earl, better known as Jesse Gender. Out of everyone that I spoke to who was also a YouTuber, Jesse was by far the kindest person. I think Jesse might be one of the kindest people I've ever met or ever encountered. We never actually met in person because of... He tried to rope Jesse Gender into supporting this video. Yeah, I saw. I was about to mention that Jesse Gender made a video response to this, which I don't know. Maybe we'll have to watch it, given depending on how much he talks about Jesse Gender. About this is Jesse Gender who is being talked about in the video right now. About James Summerton's apology to me. Unless something happens, this is the last time I ever want to discuss him. But considering he apologizes to me in a way that made me deeply uncomfortable, I want to address it. My support to all who he whom he stole from. Wait, how long is this video? Hey there, into Oh no, it's an hour. Okay, we're gonna put this on the back burner. Needless to say, it does not seem that Jesse Gender approves of the way that James Summerton is talking about her here. So maybe we'll react to that if he if he talks about it more. But for now, we're going to continue with his apology. We're not going to digress. Let's do this. My hot-headedness, I drew her into just this anger spiral of mine that was unwarranted and absolutely ruined a possible friendship. Jessie was actually doing her best to kind of mitigate my frustration and, and everything and and uh, at that moment, and I just wasn't allowing her to do that. And I really, truly, honestly want to apologize to her for that. Again, if, if you ever get the chance to speak with Jessie one-on-one, -on -one, or if you have gotten the chance, you'll know just how nice she is and how kind. And I was a, a real asshole. Okay, this... This is one of those times where, like, listing off people's names in the middle of this type of response under the heat that you have, you're doing a disservice to them, you know? Like, <laughs> getting praised by the guy who got called out massively and unequivocally for heavily evidenced mass plagiarism and then issued a complete cop-out fraud apology and then waited three months and then is now so far in the first five minutes repeating almost the exact same mistakes from the previous apology video um that's a real move and and then praising somebody when you're that guy actually that actually kind of damages them you see you're actually making it worse you're making the situation worse for them and it kind of seems like a spiteful and further inconsiderate thing to do for uh, dragging her into my reactionary, unwarranted frustration. We, Which you're kind of doing right now. But all right, we, let's Obviously, we haven't spoke since all of that happened. Um, but Jesse, if you are watching this video, um, I do want you to know that I am honestly sorry for that. I hope truly, honestly... I hope everything goes as well as possible for you because you deserve all of it. There was a misunderstanding between Jesse and I um, after that happened that I do want to clear up where someone who at least claimed to be a fan of Jesse's, you know, did an internet and threatened to kill me, which is, you know, 
being a person on the internet, death threats are unfortunately not uncommon. At the time, though, uh, I was in a very panicked state, and so I did report it to the police. I did not report Jesse to the police, which is the misunderstanding that people um, came away with. I did not report Jesse to the police. I would have no... Oh, that is such a... That is such a manipulative thing to do. Like, I offer you a genuinely, honestly, truly, veritably, veritably, truthfully, honestly, beyond genuine, honestly, truthfully, deeply, heartfelt, honest apology. And your fans that were sending me death for threats, you know, it's just water under the bridge that they were threatening my life, that your fans, Jesse Gender, your fans were threatening my life. What a dirty move. <laughs> what a what a dirty move. Oh, I forgot sincerely. Sorry. Sincerely. Sincerely. No reason to do that. And it did end up that this person had a prior record with the police um, of violent acts. And they actually lived quite near me. Um, so the police took it very seriously. They took it so seriously that they implored me not to speak to Jesse, which I took their advice on, which I shouldn't have, honestly. I should have at least... Okay. So we have no evidence so far provided for any of this. We have just his word which we, of course, need to remember the score currently, which is that so far, through all of our coverage, all of everyone's coverage of the James Summerton situation, we know that James Summerton is a goddamn liar. That this guy is a liar guy. That's one of the main things that he is currently being, uh, you know, focused on for. Um, he's proven none of this. None of this is, let's check the description just to be sure. Nothing. No evidence of any of these claims linked. And also, I don't think that you should be boasting about having the cops arrest someone over something that they said on the internet to you, especially because we only have his word on what was actually said. Wow. Okay. Police report. Police reports are public. True, but we don't know who actually filed the police report. We don't know where it was filed. We don't know who it was filed against. We don't know which police department. There's no way to verify this. He could indeed prove it. And keep in mind that all of this is in service of appending a fuck you to Jesse Gender at the end of his so-called apology to Jesse Gender. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, Jesse Gender, you know, and don't worry about those um, death threats, those credible death threats. Ha ha ha. You know, don't worry. It's just, you know, it's just between us. Ha 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 ha. Oh my God. All right. Just clarified to Jesse what was going on and not just left her hanging. And so. I want to, again, apologize to Jesse for that. But in that state, I listened to the police, which is, you know, maybe... Of course you fucking did. You know, the best decision all the time, because the cops don't usually have the best interests of people at heart. So, Jesse, I want to apologize. Of people? in uh, They don't have the best interests of people at heart? Or they don't have the best interests of uh, some people at heart? That's an interesting... That's an interesting little way of wording that, my man. That's an interesting way of wording that. Apologize for that and everything else that happened. Completely understand why you would not want to speak to me ever again, but I just want you to know that I am sorry. But now back on the original topic, the work Nick and I were doing on the channel, we wanted it to be you know, for everyone. We wanted it to be a channel where every queer person could feel welcomed, and we failed at that. That is something that, in hindsight, I think is impossible to create, and that's why it's... 
it is impossible to create, it's but imp you failed at that for a very specific reason, which is that you stole from the you created your channel by stealing from other queer people who had their who did their own work and were building their own communities and you stole from them important for there to be many different queer voices in spaces like youtube and there are what's more important is that those voices are discoverable which is something that i should have been helping with i often shared other no you shouldn't have been yeah, sure, you should be helping with, but you know what you shouldn't have been doing? You shouldn't have been hurting it. Not just a matter of helping. You don't, queer creators don't have an obligation to promote every other queer creator on the planet. That's obviously an absurd standard. But you know what you do have an obligation not to do? To You have an obligation to not fuck over and steal for your own glory and your own self-enrichment other queer creators work. That is a, that's kind of an obligation that everybody has. Let's continue. Creators on Twitter, but this was when I only had, you know, 800, 1,000 Twitter followers. And these creators usually had a whole lot more than that. It was a weird thing because usually what? they would have infinitely more Twitter followers, but a whole lot less YouTube subscribers. I'm not sure what huh? created that dichotomy, but something was definitely off with the algorithm there. There is a part of my brain that says- You, you made your money on YouTube. You didn't make your fucking money on Twitter and you stole their work, you, you clown. What the fuck is this? YouTube kind of went, oh, you know, white male queer, let's push him and you know, ignore everyone else. No, dude, it isn't just white male the... queer. It's not just white male queer. You took the the wonderful and beautiful work made by other people and used it yourself. You pretended to be somebody that you weren't with actually good created stuff and people liked that stuff because it was good and you grew your platform off of that. You can't just blame this on some identity group you can't lady gaga i was born this way your way out of fucking plagiarism allegations my man that doesn't fucking work holy shit i'm sorry i'm male i'm sorry i'm white i'm sorry i'm male i'm sorry i'm white i'm sorry i'm male <laughs> Actual footage of James Summerton in the editing room for this goddamn video. Shout out to TJ Kirk. The community, whereas people were able to actually discover uh, other queer creators on Twitter and then make their way to YouTube, but the YouTube algorithm kind of... That's the most negative interpretation I have of it, which unfortunately may be true. Uh, Dude, the most negative interpretation is that you stole people's genuinely good work and made it seem as if you made that work and you grew your platform off of a bunch of different people's genuinely good work. And, by po and because you were stealing it and not actually making it yourself, you could post a hundred videos a month or whatever goddamn pace you were posting on. You could post a video every other week of high quality work that you stole. Of course you're going to grow a YouTube channel if you don't have to do the work that is necessary to create a high quality piece of work. Jesus fucking Christ. In any case, I should have done more to share the voices of other queer people. Certainly the people whose works I used, both credited and plagiarized in my videos, but also just other creators on YouTube. It's important for us as a community. Punkarella says, Demon Mama, is it just me or is this apology even worse than the last one? Um. Okay, so the last one was really bad, okay? Let's not forget how bad the last one was. There was the fake crying. There was the, um, I almost died from, uh, uh, sort of vaguely described self endangerment. 
uh, because you had the the you had the gall to call me out for me stealing from a ton of people. Um, you know that, how selfish of you. It was pretty bad. I will say this one does have the added benefit of being like polished and yet still basically delivering the same message. And he's not doing the fake crying thing, so he's had enough time to like put a mask back on. But I don't know. I don't, is it worse than the original one? I don't know. We're only eight minutes in. So far, it's pretty fucking bad. He is vaguely defined as we are to support each other. And I didn't do that nearly enough. From day one, I was very taken in by the idea of being a YouTuber. As soon as my videos started to get recommended by the algorithm after not releasing a new video for like two years, I felt like I had a short period of time to get the next videos out as soon as possible. LB says, did anyone tell Demon Mama he hasn't actually reached out to H-Bomber to guy? Yes, I, I showed that on stream just in case anyone missed it. H-Bomber guy. This is the this is H Bomber guy's actual official Twitter account. Yes, uh, he uh, James Summerton has not reached out to H Bomber guy, which by the way there is no excuse for. This video should not go live making a promise to pay H Bomber guy into the H Bomber guy victims of James Summerton fund. Um, if you uh haven't already reached out, to, that's that's ridiculous. If you haven't actually reached out, that's insane. Let's continue. Well, which is why so little work was put into the writing of them and so much was taken from other places, plagiarized. Early on, I thought crediting authors in the opening credits alone was enough, especially since the video. Danny says, Demon Mama, another thing of relevance, the people that he did reach out to, he offered exposure, not money. Wait, let me see this one. Mick Abrahamson. Mr. Steal Your Work, James Summerton emailed me with an apology. The final paragraph is the icing on the cake. He wants to pay me back an exposure. Lol. Lamau. Uh, here's a screenshot of the email. I offer you my most sincere, honest apologies. If there is something I can do to make it up to you, whether it be spreading your latest work to my admittedly smaller now, but still not, but still not insubstantial following, promote projects you might be passionate about, or even help you to produce the videos for you. What? I want to make things right if I can. Sincerely, James Summerton. Wait, oh, they go further down here. Mick Abramson says, Funnily enough, one entire paragraph of this email was devoted to why he couldn't give me the money. The classic, the video was demonetized at release excuse. That is rotten. That is rotten. That is pathetic. He's all, uh, James Summerton has also been copyright art claiming archive channels. Uh oh, that's a bad sign. This is from the H bomber guy. Um, this is from the H bomber guy subreddit. Two James Summerton archive channels have been terminated. One of them has been copyright claimed by James himself. Here's an archive of the re-upload from Archive James Summerton, and here's the video now. It's been copyright claimed. Another channel, James Summerton Reuploads, has been terminated. The channel James Summerton Archives is down to four videos. It was seven earlier today, but they've now been copyright claimed. Update January 30th, 2024. James Summerton Archive has been fully terminated. All three archive channels are gone. You're such a selfish person, James. I only wanted those that you stole from to be found. And I guess those thousand dollar cameras were worth more than the marginalized voices you silenced. That is... Well, I think that kind of puts the nail in the coffin for any chance that there's any sincerity in this, right? He's taking down... He's trying to make sure that the evidence of further crimes is hidden. Those channels existed to re-upload his videos after he delisted all of his videos. His videos were delisted because H Bomber Guy checked the, the, the first page of his 
of his website and found a a wall of plagiarized documentation. Or sorry, I should say plagiarized writing and documented all of it. And that was just the first page of his videos. James Summerton has been uploading dozens upon dozens of videos, which H Bomber Guy himself didn't have the time to go through every single video. Which means he's not just, he didn't just hide his, 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 his bad behavior. He's now going through the process of deliberately targeting anyone who even tries to find out if he ever took anything at all. That is disgusting. That is genuinely disgusting. With all this context, this might actually make this response worse than the first one, but we better continue. Those weren't monetized early on, but I understand now, especially after speaking with some of the people who were who I did plagiarize, that that was just, I was wrong. That was not the way to go about it. They should have been cited properly within the text of the video. They should have been called out in the video at least once verbally as well as you know having citations on screen if there were a whole lot of them like with you know one of the examples that h bomber guy used in his video was the deep cuts video there were a whole lot of people who i you know credited in the opening credits but really it's plagiarism they should have been cited on screen with actual citations of this was this this was the, this is the illuminati thing this is the Illuminati excuse of, oh, I, I just needed to cite them slightly better. No, you made an entire video out of other people's work and you also didn't cite them. Both of those things are an issue. If you make a video, if, okay, if I was to start a video tomorrow and just start my video and say, and start reading, you know, uh, somebody else's work. Like maybe let's say that I, I, uh, I post a, uh, a video exposing James Summerton, and it's just word for word, the script of H Bomber Guy's video mixed with the script of Todd in the Shadows James Summerton video. And then I just have a little footnote in the corner that says, credit to uh, H Bomber Guy and, uh, and Todd in the Shadows. That doesn't fucking cut it. I am functionally re-uploading your thing with no real spin added to it, with no real touch added to it. That is still copying your work completely. This is ridiculous. You know, links where you can find this stuff. Maybe there should have even been a bibliography that you could have gone to, like on a Google Drive or That's something That's the minimum like that. you should because, have done. Yeah, you know, although I might have stated that the scripts were based upon the work of these authors. It, in many cases, wasn't just based on their work. It was their work, word for word. In some cases, I did get permission, like with the Evil Queen's Disney video. I'll put the email up on the screen that I got. Hi, James. I did get a chance to watch your video. While I am perhaps not as pessimistic about the relationship between Disney and LGBTQI culture as your piece is, I recognize and largely agree with the issues you are raising about where things have gone since I wrote my book. And I'm grateful for the shout out on the title card. It was the one thing that I was going to request, that you give me at least a bit of citation. It's a very thoughtful video, and I hope your audience gets a lot out of it. All the best, Sean. This is not permission. This is saying, uh, I, I, I would like it if you at least gave me a little bit of citation. This is the, this is the weakest thing ever. And this is after release. You didn't get permission. He just exposed himself as a fucking liar in real time. Did he not, did he not, did he not think that anybody was going to pause here and read it? Well, that's why you're watching Drama Mama, because we do actually take the time to pause and read things. I know, right? You'd think, oh, you'd think that's like the easiest thing in the world, but you know, a lot of people don't do that. So if you're enjoying this, press subscribe to Demon Mama down below, because God knows this is a torture for me, and I'm doing it for you. Anyway, let's continue. From Sean Griffin, um, where he did give me permission to publish the video. I sent the finished video to him and he watched it and he gave me permission, but. He did not give you permission. That is not permission. That is, I would have appreciated if you at least gave me some citation. Thanks for putting my name in the beginning of the video. 
I don't want to fight you over this because I don't think it's worth it. That's not permission. That's saying you're too much of a small fry for me to care about. And that's one author. One. What about all the fucking 20 other people that were talked about in the H Bomber guy video? In most cases, I didn't get permission and thought that just putting the author's name in the opening credits was enough. I was much more interested in the production of the videos than the writing of them at this point. So after three or four videos, I brought Nick on as a main writer for the channel. The idea is that they would write the vast majority of the scripts. I would film, voice, and edit the videos. Uh, we have a fact check moment. Everybody, thank you for this, Emu Anon. As it turns out, Sean Griffin, who was just featured in that email, wrote an article about just this event earlier this month. How my book became the subject of a YouTube scandal, Sean Griffin. Two months ago, several current and former students texted me asking if I had seen a new YouTube video titled Plagiarism in YouTube. The video by H Bomber Guy, also known as Harry Brewis, received more than 15 million views and nearly 20 minutes of its four hour runtime were spent discussing the plagiarism of my book, Tinkerbells and Evil Queens, the Walt Disney Company from the Inside Out. Over 20 years after its publication, it had become the subject of an online scandal. I guess the only thing worse than bad publicity is no publicity at all. The issue was first brought to my attention in September of 2020, when a stranger informed me that a YouTuber named James Summerton had used large portions of my book in a video without citing me. A day later, Summerton himself reached out. Summerton claimed an oversight, apologized, and offered to revise the video to give me prominent credit for my work. Watching his now-deleted video essay, Evil Queens, Disney's Queer Cold War, it was immediately and abundantly clear that he had lifted full paragraphs and pages from my book and used them as his script. Video essays are a popular genre on YouTube. In a YouTube video essay, creators argue for their thesis using voiceover, clips from media, and other tools unique to the medium. Like any other essayist, these writers are expected to cite their sources. There were no professors to hold Summerton accountable, only the vigilante in my inbox. Summerton sent a link to the revised video with an opening title card that credited me in the book. I was satisfied with this change and told him so because I did not think it too huge of a deal to get into over a 20-year-old book. Both individuals who had contacted me were claiming they were being harassed by the other, including supposed calls to the police and death threats. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds similar. I had absolutely no desire to get pulled into this chaos. Interesting. So here's the here's the later part. Fortunately, the damage to me personally or professionally seems to have been minimal, at least so far. In the 20 years since the book was published, I have gained a name as an expert in Disney and LGBTQIA plus issues, including being interviewed for articles in Vanity Fair, Time, and the Washington Post. I was invited to write a co -op, uh, an op-ed piece for the New York Times. I would, say the, I would say Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has helped increase my status as a media expert as much as Harry Brewis. DeSantis' attempt to push the Walt Disney Company for their support, uh, to punish the Walt Disney Company for the support of LGBTQIA rights has framed Tinkerbells and Evil Queens in a new light. And if anything, the brouhaha that Brewis generated has spurred on sales of the book, which that was one of the things that H Bomber Guy specifically set out to do. As such, I felt the need to respond to an offer made by Brewis, H Bomber Guy, at the end of his video. He plans to divide his earnings from plagiarism in YouTube among the authors plagiarized by James Summerton. In the comments section for the video, I thanked him and many others who have come to my defense. I said that the offer of sharing compensation was a beautiful gesture, but that I was not struggling financially. Class act. Class act. And thus, he should take whatever my portion would be and split it up among the other authors. My post created a new opportunity for people to stir the pot, claiming either I had ulterior motives for my post, even though I mentioned that I would likely get financial gains from improved book sales, or that I was falsely claiming to be mentioned in the video in order to publicize the book. 
Again, people in the comments section rushed to my defense, and it seemed the accusatory posts had been taken down. Dragged into internet drama against my will, I received a small taste of the vitriol and chaos that accompanies social media attention. Hopefully, this is the last time I experience it. That is a hell of a... That's a hell of an article. Again, that is Sean Griffin, the author of Tinkerbells and Evil Queens, pointing out what I predicted would be the answer, which is that that does not sound like... Uh, that does not sound like permission... That sounds like an after-the-fact desire to not get involved in your garbage, James Summerton. Actually wild. That is incredible. And, of course, I can't help but notice, unrelated to the immediate drama, this glowing indictment, this seething indictment of the online spaces... Dragged into internet drama against my will, I received a small taste of the vitriol and chaos that accompanies social media attention. Hopefully this is the last time I experience it. Imagine that. Imagine just making books and being able to live completely unconnected with the internet. And the one time you step in, not even step in, you're brought in without your even knowledge that it turns into a goddamn nightmare. That is how bad these spaces are online. Which, by the way, is something I've been talking about quite a lot for quite a while on my channel. How nightmarish and creativity-destroying online social media content creation bullshit is. But those videos are on my channel. We gotta continue with this apology or we're never gonna finish. Let's go and we'd split the money that came in. We were roommates at the time, and Nick didn't. And they were roommates. Didn't have a job, so I figured it would help both of us. This is actually when we had some of our biggest videos, uh, like the ones talking about Wiccan and Hulkling, where we lucked out because it came out right in time for WandaVision to hit. And then the Killing Stalking video, which became our biggest video by far. Uh, the Sadism of Class was another one. These videos weren't plagiarized and we loved making them. Uh, it didn't take long for the channel income to start growing. Lucky timing, really, because this was around the same time that I was laid off since the company that I was working for downsized once COVID hit its second year. Nick and I had both grown up poor, so we started doing what we could to try and stabilize our income as much as possible. Remember, wait, so this would have been, hold on, let's see, hold on. Was this around the time he purchased the fucking camera? Okay, so that would have been in early 2023. So, hmm, maybe not, maybe he's still, maybe we can't fact check this specific one. Yeah, I'm looking at the thread right now. Let's go. So I just wanted to check and see if he's talking about being on financial hard times during the time that he decided to purchase an insanely expensive camera. But my, it looks like that might have been slightly after this event. This meant putting out more videos, which meant I had to take over more of the writing duties. But since filming, editing, usually doing multiple edits because of YouTube copyright issues. Danny, have a great time. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll have fun editing this. <laughs> yeah, as well as managing the channel and dealing with my mom's recent cancer diagnosis, all of that was already taking up so much of my time and attention. This led to a lot of copy and pasting blocks of text into scripts. My intention at the time was to use these as a jumping off point once Nick and I sat down to edit the script, because that's what we would do. I would sort of put in my parts, Nick would put in his parts, and then we would sit down at a table, read through the whole script, and kind of try and make it seem cohesive. But, and here's something I'm sure a lot of people will call a bullshit excuse, I have memory issues because of a head. Oh, dude. Oh my god, you can't be serious. No, dude, come on. For fucking, of course people are gonna call that a bullshit excuse. Of course they're gonna call that a bullshit excuse. 
memory issues are not a fucking excuse for mass plagiarizing across fucking 20 videos when you even hire a secondary writer and you're making crazy amounts of money. This is not an excuse. This is crazy. That's fucking literally I for gore. Everybody's saying it. I, oh my fucking God. Head injury from when I was a child. Uh, they're actually getting worse. I've talked about it on streams and in videos. So yes, it is real, but some people will call it a bullshit excuse anyway. The head injury is it's actually- a bull what... It's not a bullshit excuse. It's not a bullshit excuse because anybody doesn't think you have memory issues, okay? It, people have memory issues. I feel like I have memory issues, okay? A lot of people have memory issues, okay? But memory issues do not explain how you constructed a coherent video out of stolen materials, published it onto your channel, it went through multiple reviews and an editing process, and then you made a ton of money off it. That's why it's a bullshit excuse. No one is saying you don't have fucking memory issues. I'm sure you do. Led to me having epilepsy, which is why I can't work in any job that involves physical labor. Employers can't get insurance for me to like lift things or operate vehicles and stuff like that. I actually did marketing for a restaurant group for a little while, but got let go when they found out that I was epileptic because at least according to them, I couldn't be insured to be in the kitchens where I needed to be to film videos and take photos and stuff like that. But anyway, when it came to editing the scripts, I couldn't remember what I'd written and what had been copy pasted. We should have just chucked out everything that I had put into the script and filled them in with wholly original thoughts. Yes, you should have done that. I, I, I can't help but feel that if you can't remember what, what you wrote and what you stole, that you are not qualified to be doing that type of work. I just, I don't, I don't feel like that's fair to anyone involved or to your audience, or I just don't think that's a match, you know? It seems like there's gotta be a different type of work you can do. Like clearly, he seems to have some passion for camera work. So why doesn't he just do camera work? Why don't you, if he's, if, you know, he seems to be passionate and talented about it. Why didn't he just do that? Why are you trying to be the fucking primary writer if you can't remember what you wrote versus what you stole? And you can't conclude, more so, you can't conclude, I shouldn't steal that because I have a hard time fucking remembering what I actually wrote. And yes, as many people are pointing out, his memory seems to be very, very sharp for certain things. Yeah, it's almost like maybe he's got a little bit of the selective memory loss, you know? Or I should have been taking notes on where things came from so that we could at least cite them in the videos, if nothing else. But I never did that. According to Garbagool says, I work as a return to work coordinator in Australia. I have lots of clients who have epilepsy and are working just fine. Well, no, you, Garbagool, you don't understand. In Canada, there's a law that says epileptic people can't work any job besides stealing from other people on the internet. It's this, it's a, you wouldn't get it because you're from Australia, you see. It's, it's a Canada thing. They're weird up there, okay? Canadians, they've got some weird, they got some weird shit going on. It's a tragedy, honestly. To my therapist, my not thinking to do that probably stems from my recently diagnosed ADHD, but I don't- Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! As a, excuse me, excuse me, as a fellow ADHD haver- B Bazinga, <laughs> Bazinga, Bazinga. Bazinga. Hold on a second. Claim check. Claim check. Hold on. B -b -b Bazinga. To do that probably stems from my recently diagnosed. At least cite them in the videos, if nothing else. But I know where things came from so that we could at least cite them in the videos, if nothing else. But I never did that. According to my therapist, my not thinking to do that probably stems from my recently diagnosed ADHD. But I don't know if I'm willing to say that. Right. You just did! You just said it! You, what do you mean you're not willing? You just said it, you fucking idiot! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, listen. As you might be able to tell by the chaotic nature of my streams and the, the fairly 
the fairly eccentric presentation of my thoughts, my manner of dress, and my manner of speeching. Speeching? <laughs> I got the ADHD pretty bad, okay? The ADHD has been a part of my life for a long time. I have had the ADHD since long before I became a streamer, okay? And, um, it doesn't make you want to steal from people, okay? Okay, okay, maybe it, maybe it makes you want to steal from some- No, no, wait, that's something else. No, no, it doesn't make you have to steal from people. It doesn't make you, um, have, you know, do an oopsie doopsie to accidentally collect, like, however what- However much he was making. What was he making? Do we even remember? I don't even remember. What was it fucking tens of thousands of dollars a month off of Patreon? It doesn't make you need to, to make tens of thousands of dollars off of Patreon. Uh, by stealing other people's work. It doesn't make you reluctant to be a good person. Sometimes you get distracted easily. Sometimes you have a really fucking hard time getting work done. Sometimes you have a really hard time sitting down to read a book. There's all kinds of things that ADHD makes you struggle with. But, um, like, that isn't one of them. Okay, not even fucking close, my man. This is pathetic. I, I, we, yeah, so far we have a uh, mom with cancer, memory problems, raised up poor, ADHD, epilepsy, employment discrimination, Nick's fault, cis, white, and male, and, and gay, YouTube algorithm, um, uh, maybe we should, maybe we should add Ares Mayonnaise, that's a good one, Ares Mayonnaise, let's put that one, that's another one you should put in there. Maybe it was, or maybe it was just plain laziness. Maybe I thought that this was somewhere that I could cut a corner because I was torn. Also, I'm sorry not to do this again, but uh, no one with ADHD would have this hair haircut, okay? Nobody with ADHD. Sorry, I got to stand up for my ADHD havers, okay? Nobody would have this haircut, okay? It just it just wouldn't happen. ADHD people would not sort of do like a, the paintbrush look. So many other directions. Honestly, I can't remember, like I said. Memory issues. But yes, we should have just thrown out my contributions to the scripts and filled them in with original writing. But we felt like we had too much of a time crunch. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to say it. Thank you. Thank you. You've saved me. Rudon1334 in YouTube chat has saved me by saying, Why does he have the stone tossed turd hair? I didn't say it. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I may have been thinking it for a long time, but I didn't say it. I did say it, but I said it because somebody else was saying it. So you can, you can blame, blame them. It's not my fault. I have ADHD. We felt like we had to get videos out more often to feed the algorithm. And then my mom died and I became completely useless. I couldn't think straight at all. So Nick had to completely take over writing duties while I dealt with things you deal with after a person dies. My dad, you see, he can't read or write. Uh, he was very poor when he was a kid. So he had to leave school really young to work in order okay. to feed his many brothers and sisters. So I had to deal with all the legal stuff after my mom died, as well as making sure that all my dad's bills were paid and whatnot especially after his income was basically cut in half. There was supposed to be a buffer here, money-wise, as my mom had a life insurance policy that was going to be split between my dad and myself. But the insurance company, RBC Insurance, so if you have insurance with them, maybe rethink that, uh, refused to pay out the policy because my mother never mentioned that she had family with diabetes. She <laughs> Scott pronouns, thank you. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. And all I need you to do is buy these chocolate container containers. I mean, subscribe to my Patreon. He didn't have diabetes, but because she didn't think to mention that she had family with diabetes, it apparently voided the policy. All they did was refund a year's worth of premiums that she'd paid even though she'd been paying them for about 15 years. One of the things, the main thing, 
really, that I was supposed to do with my portion of the insurance money was I was supposed to make a movie. These were direct instructions from my mom herself. She'd been very much behind me when I decided, when I was about 10, <laughs> that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And she wanted me to finally have the opportunity to do that, even if she never got to see it. So when the life insurance went bust, I decided to try and crowdfund it, at least enough to make a short film or two. This is what Telos grew out of. So what happened with Telos? Let me break down the time. Okay, I don't understand how any of this is relevant really to anything that's being discussed here. All of this is what we would call a sob story, okay? Now, the term sob story is kind of mean, but this is a pretty fair application of a sob story, okay? A lot of the things happening here are legitimately very sad, but what do they really actually have to do with anything that's being discussed here? He's just putting this in here so you feel bad for him so that some portion of the audience that is watching this will say, ah, you know, he's had it hard. Maybe we shouldn't care so much and we'll trot away in the other direction. In reality, none of this affects any of the actions that he took. He is just telling his life story and trying to use things that happened to him and other people as an excuse for his bad behavior, but they're not. The hardships he had with his mom do not ex explain, they do not, they do not excuse his later plagiarism. They do not excuse his ongoing plagiarism. Yeah, exactly. As Scott Pronoun says, this is the type of thing that would be more sympathetic if it was found out that he was botting his views or something, but was coming clean about it. Yeah, this would work if you were like, listen, I was on financial hard times. I cheated the system, okay? I, I faked the number of viewers I was getting, which is, you know, basically it is as close to a victimless online crime as you can get. It's still bad and you're gonna fuck yourself over and you're gonna fuck up the market obviously. So it does have a knock-on effect, but let's be real. If one YouTuber is botting, you know, botting or whatever, all right, you can understand, oh, okay, he was desperate. He needed money, so he cheated the system. And you can go, that's shitty. That's, that's a good point. But this isn't that. This is years of systematized plagiarism and then a refusal to take responsibility for it and on top of that, potentially a GoFundMe slash Kickstarter scam. Timeline. When we launched the campaign in February of 2022, we hoped to raise $3,000 to produce a short film that we hoped that we would then use as a sort of proof of concept to attract investors, either private, public, or through Canada's telefilm program to produce a feature. Some people online have stated that $3,000 never would have covered the short film, but these were not going to be unionized movies, and we were very clear about that up front. We wanted to be able to pay actors as best that we could, but we never expected to be able to reach typical union wages. The crew you didn't pay anybody. The money's disappeared, and Nick has said the money has disappeared. Crew was going to be made up of people that I had gone to film school with. Everyone, including Nick and myself, we were roommates at the time living on the East Coast, were more than happy to work behind the scenes for free. We planned on writing a movie with a small cast and only one or two locations, ideally ones that we could get access to for free. Again, we assumed all of the money would go to the actors. Uh, we kind of looked at this as a sort of community theater troupe, but for filmmaking. After the campaign launched, it did infinitely better than we could have expected and our ambitions grew we started planning to make a feature instead of a short film and the plan was to take this around to uh, film festivals the feature we settled on entitled final girl was about the lone survivor of a slasher movie type massacre 10 years after the fact as she was publishing a book about her ordeal 
drawing attention from people online, convinced that she had actually been the killer all along. In the end, we would find out that the killer was the boyfriend of the girl who the main character had secretly been dating okay. at the time of the killings. Okay, who and cares? most of the people he killed... Why do we care about the fucking plot summary of your shitty movie? What does that have to do? What does the plot summary of your stupid fucking non-existent vaporware bullshit have to do with what we're talking about here? Just what? What? Were in his eyes collateral damage as he made his way to our main character because he was not happy that his girlfriend was cheating on him with a girl. And to those who say that I plagiarized the plot from the novel Final Girl Support Group by Grady Vix, read the book. It's nothing like the plot of the movie. And the final girl is a trope. Novel Final Girl to Wait. our main character, because he was not happy that his girlfriend was cheating on him with a girl. And to those who say that I plagiarized the plot from the novel Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, read the book. It's nothing like the plot of the movie. And the final girl is a trope in horror movies. So if using the final girl trope is plagiarism, then basically everyone who's made a slasher movie since... Okay, this is like oddly catty and defensive. Maybe you should leave this stupid catty nonsense and the pitch for your movie script out of your fucking apology script, your apology soft reboot. This is meaningless, just meaningless drivel. This is drivel. Texas Chainsaw Massacre owes the Toby Hooper estate some money. But anyway, Nick and I planned out the movie, but I didn't want to start writing it until the campaign ended and the money was- Isn't the cheating bisexual sort of an, an offensive stereotype? Yeah, but we're not here to put him on trial for making a movie with the- for writing a bad premise for a movie with crappy offensive stereotypes in it, okay? You know, yeah, it kind of is, but you know, whatever was actually deposited. Uh, after the insurance debacle, I didn't want to count our chickens before they hatched. When the money was officially deposited, I immediately began work on the screenplay. I finished it that summer, soon after Nick had left to spend two months at home in Ottawa, Ontario with family. I sent the script to him to read right away because I was pr very proud of it. But Nick- Nut says, isn't he bi? Who cares? Okay, to be fair, somebody can be a thing and do a bad version of that thing, okay? But the movie doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter anyway. That's the real thing that matters. Didn't want to share his- And also, I don't know if he's bisexual. Is he? I don't know. ...opinion on it until he got back to the East Coast. So in the meantime, I put out a preliminary casting call on local job boards. When Nick got back, uh, he believed that the script needed a page one rework. This is also when he told me that he'd be moving back to Ontario permanently soon, as he wanted to live closer to family and live in a bigger city with more opportunities. This was a punch to the gut for me. We'd been living together since 2015 and had become quite dependent on each other. I felt like there was no way that I could make this movie without him. And since I had received not that many replies to the initial casting call, I took this as a sign that Ontario would be a better place to launch Telos, even though all my professional, professional film connections were on the East Coast. That was a mistake. There, I had free access to the campground that would serve as the setting for a good portion of the movie, as well as easy access to any number of houses, apartments, and even all. Okay. 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 But who fucking cares? What does any of this have to do with anything? Is he describing why he... Is, is this like... Is this a post-mortem of the Kickstarter now? Because that's not what this video seems like it's supposed to be. This doesn't seem like it's supposed to be, I'm, I'm doing this video to address why my Kickstarter failed. It seems like this is supposed to be addressing the previous allegations which have been mounting for months, and now he's also just kind of whining about him having a hard time making a movie. Yes, making your first movie is a fucking nightmare, and it's probably gonna be bad. 
But you didn't even finish the fucking movie. So there's no movie. Maybe you should make a video to your Kickstarter supporters. This is not that. This is supposed to be a measured response to the allegations. The allegations of which are that the money has disappeared for the entire Telos project. Not just one movie going bad. Not just a sob story about you having a hard time because your buddy is moving away and that means that you can't get access to the campground that you wanted to use and instead had to shoot somewhere else. This is so goddamn stupid. You know, this is fucking testing my patience. If you're watching, make sure you press subscribe to Demon Mama down below, okay? If you're here and you're watching and you're enjoying this and you're saying, wow, Mama, you're funny. You're sure adding a lot to this painful apology full of lies. Then subscribe. I would love to have you. And I know, I, I know that you all want something more, des desperately want something more than this fucking bullshit. I know you want something in your ears better than just this shit. This fucking James Somerton endless fucking whining bullshit. Offices that friends of friends would let me use to shoot. In Ontario, I had none of that. Which immediately put the brakes on Final Girl, since there was no conceivable way of filming it, at least not within the budget that we had. After Nick and I moved to the Toronto area, he decided that he actually wanted to move home to Ottawa, uh, to the Ottawa area, about five hours away. At least for a little while. In the meantime, he would take a train to the GTA, the greater Toronto area, once a month, uh, to work on YouTube videos for a few days and then head back. This went on for a little less than a year. So I began brainstorming new movies that we could film in Ontario. This is where the multiple posters and teaser trailers came from. I was trying to create something tangible to show that work was still being done with Telos. I wrote multiple treatments for movies over the next few months, and Nick and I eventually landed on one called Antisocial, a murder mystery about a former social media clique who had gone their separate ways on very bad terms, and they were coming together for a reunion at a sort of VidCon event. Um, they were all sharing a house, and then some of them were gonna start showing up dead. Around this same time, summer of 2023, uh, Nick okay. had moved to the GTA full time. Uh, he and I spent weeks working out exactly how the murder mystery would parse out in the movie. We had a bunch of whiteboards up on my wall, and we were just breaking it down piece by piece. Uh, I'd put out a new casting call in the GTA and received hundreds of responses. So I was planning on casting as soon as the script was finished. But after trying to work out the numbers as far as paying actors went, plus locations, food, costumes, as well as the equipment that we'd already purchased and the legal costs of setting up Telos as a business, we realized that we'd gone way too big with this movie. Uh, the movie had too many characters. So wait, where's the, where, wait, where's the movie? Did this movie get made? Did this movie get, can anybody tell me, did this movie get made? So is this all, is this all in his head? Is him, is he, is he talking about like a, like a dream that he had about making a movie? He stole actual money and then thought about making the movie and it never worked out? Like, what is he talking about here? So no movie. No movie was ever made. This is all hypotheticals. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, we... When I was thinking about the movie that I wanted to make, I wanted to make, I realized that I wanted to go too big, so I needed to want to go smaller, and the people that I wanted to work on it, and the food that I wanted to eat, and the costumes that I wanted to make at the campground that I wanted to go to for the movie that I wanted to make were all wanting too much. And now, that's why the money is gone. What do you mean? What did you spend it on? You spent it on all those things? Oh, no, 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 I, we didn't actually do any of that. I was just thinking about it. And I thought about it for so long that I spent all the money on expensive equipment for myself to, and a, maybe a nice couch and maybe some caviar or something. Too many locations. And it was just way too complex to be able to pull off with the budget. So I started working on a script for a movie called The Listener. 
about a true crime podcaster focused on the mysterious deaths of homeless gay men in his city. I was a fair way into the script when we realized it'd be about a year before we could even film anything since winter was on its way and the story relied heavily on a summer setting. So we went back to the drawing board yet again. What? This is so funny. Oh my, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is just really funny. <laughs> ah, I wrote a summer movie and it's winter, damn it. What are you talking, what are you, the, 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 the most regular thing on the planet is the fucking seasonal changes for now. I know climate change is coming, but for now, come on, man. What are you fucking talking about? Also, I have to remember, we can't get distracted too much about his dumb fucking yapping about all of these films that he imagined making one day while he actually took, what, $100,000 or something from people? This is pathetic. And finally, settling on a modern day adaptation of The Vampire based on the book by John Polidori. Uh, it's one of the original works of published vampire fiction. It's never received a proper film adaptation and was in public domain, so we thought it would be a great choice. And the cast could be kept down to basically five characters, with only two of them being on screen most of the time. Nick and I both wrote treatments for it, which we plan on planned on melding together into a final treatment that we would write the script based off of. We'd had a meeting about it and we were talking about how best to move forward, how fast we could get the script written, how long it would take to cast, how soon we could start shooting. We knew that it had been a while since the initial funding of Telos came in and we wanted to get something concrete out as soon as possible. After the meeting, we... This is, the, this is another part that makes no sense, okay? If you're going to be asking people for funding to make movies, you do that when you have some shit done for your movies. They got thousands upon thousands of dollars for funding movies that weren't even written yet. That is crazy. <sighs> Look. Writing is fucking hard, okay? Writing is very difficult. I know a lot of people think, well, hey, you're just sitting and typing and using a pen on a piece of paper. How hard can it be? And of course, that's hilarious and stupid. And there's a ton of people who do that. People who ge genuinely, I, I, I used to work as a freelance writer, okay? And people hear writer and they go, oh, you go like this on a piece of paper, wow. And it's like, okay, then do it, motherfucker. The reality is that no, actually writing is really difficult, especially highly creative writing where you're creating something from your own experiences and from the ether. It's difficult, okay? It's hard, it's unpredictable. A lot of the things that you start to write, you will never finish. Just even the greatest writer in the world will have a pile of unfinished stories and ideas that never really make it into a final product. In fact, I would argue that the most of, 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 of great ideas that come out of the most skilled writers in the world never actually make it to the page. That's just a, how it is. And you wanna know, making a film is even harder. It's, it's one step further because you have to take something that's written and then go the next level of coordinating a ton of people together to finish it, okay? These things are hard, okay? But everybody knows that. Anybody who's doing this shit knows that they're hard, okay? And you don't fucking ask for a fuckload of funding promising films to be made that haven't even been written yet, okay? Now, it can be a different thing. If you are like, if you're, you know, you wanna know how I know this? Because there are grants that exist out there for students making films and for aspiring filmmakers. And that's the type of stuff that you seek out if you want funding for this type of thing. Or you talk to a family member, or you uh, present this to your audience up front and go, hey, I want to make an attempt at making movies. We don't have anything but ideas right now, and here's where we wanna go. 
You don't say, I'm making a production company and we're going to be making queer films. You come honestly and you say, look, I need $10,000 to try out a bunch of film, to do a bunch of experimental shit. You guys might not like it, but it might be fun. Or you do something completely else. You say, hey, I'm going to be doing this as a side project. Watch me futz around with a fucking film camera uh, uh, in my free time. And if you think it's fun and interesting and has potential, maybe throw a few bucks my way. That's the way you do it. You don't do a Kickstarter promising a queer production house with no movies written, no pre-production done, no connections in a place that you don't know anybody in. Okay, that's just not how it goes. Producing LGBTQ films and series. Let's read it. Let's just take a look at it. Here we go. Hello, my name is James Summerton. Here we go. This is from the this is from the actual campaign. Okay? $63,000. I'm a YouTuber, marketing expert and film school grad. I'm also gay. Surprise. I'm starting a production company that will produce short films, feature films and series that focus on LGBT characters. Do you see what I'm fucking saying? And here's a million Here's fucking 10 videos. None of these were written. These were just ideas. These were just basic ideas. No work according to what he's saying right now. I have all the equipment necessary for the producing, including cinema camera, lighting, and audio equipment. The funding will go towards paying actors a living wage. And no, they weren't paid a legit living wage. They weren't paid production costs. The insurance wasn't paid. This was, this is what he did was, hey guys, I want some money to make some goofy films in my backyard to try my hand at filmmaking. What he sold it as is, I want you to be an investor in my production company. I have all the equipment. We're ready to go. And that is a load of fucking crock. That is what we call a motherfucking scam, in my opinion. I have a lot of sympathy for people as somebody who has tried to make a movie and failed. Okay, I went to film school, all right? And I made a movie, okay? Like a, I made a fucking movie. I made a short film, all right? And it sucked. Like most f school, you know, most film student movies fucking suck and mine sucked. And I had to go and wa show it to 200 people and have a bunch of professors tell me how it sucked. And it was one of the most embarrassing moments in my life. And I sat in the, after, after the fucking screening of my film, I closed myself in a closet and cried about it for fucking two hours because it hurt so bad. Okay. I've been there. I have a lot of sympathy for how hard it is. Okay. Everything that could possibly go wrong with my film went wrong, okay? We had actors get injured out of my control when I, I had, I had, uh, 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 editors completely fucking disappear before the final cut, leaving me to have to wake up at 4 a.m. and do the final cut myself. I had a director of photography who was a layabout piece of shit who repeatedly showed up to, uh, showed up on set with the batteries for our cameras that we needed to shoot discharged while I had done my part as director and producer. And I had actors showing up on time, food on time, and the DP fucking shows up with no batteries for the goddamn cameras, okay? I've been there. I've done all that. I have a lot of sympathy for failed film projects, okay? I get it. And you know what? I never did a fucking GoFundMe for $65,000 promising people that I was going to do a fucking production company for queer people that would bring queer films to the world, okay? When I asked for money, when I asked for loans from people, I said, hey, I'm a student. I wanna fuck around and try my hand at making a movie because I'm really passionate about this. And I was, and I made a movie and it fucking sucked, okay? But I did it. Don't fucking lie to people. It's that simple. Demon Mama had a John Landis moment? No, I did not have a John Landis moment. I did not crash a helicopter on top of multiple children, you fucking assholes. 
somebody got a little burnt by some hot soup that was on set, okay? I'll have you know. You fucking assholes. Went to dinner. And while at dinner, I started getting messages about the H-Bomber guy video. Huh? We were in over our heads once we left the East Coast. But the intention was never, ever, to take the money and run. I was so insanely excited about getting to make Telos a reality. I was excited about getting to make a short film, let alone a feature. It's always been my dream to make movies, so Telos meant... Demon Mama has made more films than James. I've made multiple films. I've screened multiple films at film school. And I've also made short films after film school. Um, I'm not like, I am, I am like, I love the, I, I, I'm very passionate about video and film. Okay. I really am. But, uh, when a bunch of shit happened in my own life, that prevented me from continuing to pursue my dreams of film, okay? A lot of shit happened. And you know what? Interestingly, that's why I didn't do a $70,000, $65,000 uh, Kickstarter saying I was going to open a production house because the, the, the path of my life went in a different direction from becoming a short film person, okay? Even though I did work on some. I made a great music video that I'm very proud of. And who knows, in the future, I might go back to filmmaking. I'm still very passionate about it. As you can tell, I spend half my time of my life in front of a camera, tweaking camera and lighting and getting everything all beautiful for you all, working on sound. You know, I still do a lot of those skills. I just do it in a different way. I'm a streamer now, you know? Anyway, let's continue. And means the world to me. For Nick, it was a very exciting project, but not his passion. Nick wanted to write novels, he still does. Nick looked at this as a good creative outlet that was way more fulfilling than writing video essays. I should have stayed where I was and not gone to Ontario. The move uprooted everything that was solid okay. about Telos and it took a whole year. No, dude, there was nothing back. solid about Telos. We, we've just looked at Telos and you overpromised to an unbelievable degree and all that you had going for you was some connections and a campground. The move which you chose to make, you can't blame that on Nick. Uh, this is pathetic. This is so fucking pathetic. Back on to even anything close to stable footing. But... I am working with a producer now, so you can expect an actual product from Telos this year. Oh, that's a promise, everybody. An actual product from Telos. Now, remember, uh, Telos promised a series of short films. Mark this moment, okay, everybody? Mark this moment. Another promise. 2533 of the James Summerton Apology 2. Let's do this. But I will make nothing financially from the yep. project. The money that is there will go wholly to paying queer artists to work on a queer film. I am not, nor have I ever intended to be, one of the people paid by Telos. N neither was Nick. We made this very clear to everyone who asked. During our work on Telos is also when the YouTube channel started getting sponsors, which, as I said, as someone who grew up poor, I basically accepted all of them, except for a few that I didn't think lined up with the message of the channel or had some bad news surrounding them. But there were a couple that had some anti-trans stuff going on in the news, and I just didn't want to associate with that. But by... Oh, you're such a hero, James. You're such... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for looking out for the trans community, for not accepting a big, fat paycheck from the anti-trans video game or whatever. Come on. Accepting is... 
Alexi asked, is there any way James could have made a conducive apology or explanation? Yep, we'll get into that at the end. Let's finish this though. Many sponsors as we did, which became very important when Nick and I started living apart and suddenly had two rents to pay, we ended up needing to produce even more videos, which along with the work on Telos and making sure everything was okay with my dad while living thousands of kilometers away, meant I had even less time for writing putting more stress on Nick and leading to even- You didn't have, you clearly didn't have any time for writing. You weren't writing anything. And more copy pasting from me. That's what led to us putting out, I think six videos in one month. By the way, notice that once again, in this entire video, he is blaming Nick for the plagiarism and himself for Oh, I'm, I, I made a careless copy paste because of my memory issues and my daddy issues and my mommy issues and my uncle issues and my aunt issues and my grand grandparents, second cousin, fourth removed issues and my moving across the country issues. And Nick really was the one doing all the plagiarism. I'm <laughs> pathetic. At one point, it might've been five. But in any case, it was way too damn many videos to go out in one month. We tried to take the summer off from YouTube in 2023 to work on Telos exclusively. But even that went up in smoke because my housing situation just... I won't go into it here. I've talked about it ad nauseum on streams and stuff. If you followed me on social media, you know the clusterfuck I ended up in that led to me moving twice in two months. In the last couple of months, I've received a lot of emails. Dude, that sucks. You know how many? Do you know how many trans people? You know how many queer people generally, but especially you know how many trans people I know who uh, who had to deal with horrific nightmare housing situations out of desperation, had to move multiple times in a single year, and didn't have a gigantic fucking Patreon dumping money into their pocket constantly. Boo hoo! Cry me a fucking river. This is bullshit as you can imagine, uh, many from people who were rightfully let down. Some from people threatening everything from doxing to violence because of the internet. Some with the kindest words of support I've ever heard and others simply asking why I made it so difficult to contact me and if I was okay. They wanted to know why, as they put it, I nuked my social media presence. To be frank, it's because I didn't want to exist anymore. If you watched my honestly horrendous apology video back in December, you know I tried to make that happen. The not existing thing. But it was more intense than taking too many pills. It's not that I didn't want to be alive anymore. It's that I wished I'd never existed at all. That everyone I'd ever known would be better off had I just never been there. Very George Bailey, which is fitting given that it was Christmas time. It's only thanks to some very, very dedicated doctors. That is the weirdest way to vaguely talk about a suicide attempt. I'm that that's all I'm going to say. This is the weirdest fucking way to vaguely talk about your your stu suicide attempt. Okay? And it has no place in a video like this, okay? I'm sorry, but it does not, okay? I'm very very sensitive to people having mental health struggles of this type. Okay, it's difficult, it's nightmarish, and it can be impossible, okay? Legitimately, you can find yourself in a place where you really can't see a way out of your current life situation, even if there actually are ones. You might not be able to see it, okay? But that isn't, re but that isn't relevant to making a video about why you damaged a bunch of people on the internet for your own self-enrichment, okay? It really isn't. 
that's a conversation for another time. That's a conversation for you to have with loved ones, with personal connections. That is not a conversation for you to put in your measured response to the massive allegations of theft. And one very good friend that I'm even here able to film this right now. I'm not gonna name her because I don't want to expose anyone else to the small, but seriously unstable group of people who watched the plagiarism in YouTube video and thought, well, he should be dead. Like I said, it's a, it was a very small group, but when they find out your address and some of them are actually in your city, they can be terrifying. And they did find my address. And at least a couple of them showed up while I was at the hospital. Um, my neighbors did report them to the police. Uh, and I, I won't go into any more details than that. I'm not sure if I legally even can. But there's a reason I left Ontario within a week of getting the okay to do so from the doctors. So what's next then? <laughs> like I said... You'll notice that a few of my videos are live again on the channel. These ones don't come from plagiarized content and for the most part are written in talk. A lot of people are saying proof or it didn't happen. I think that I, it's understandable to want proof, but also people are really fucking weird on the internet. I've talked about this many times. I'm not involved in any fucking uh, controversy of this type. And people are weird to me, and I am very unsettled about the way that people behave towards me and the type of information that people try to find about me, okay? I'm not doubting that that happens. I'm not doubting that it may have even happened in this particular incident. However, that's not relevant, okay? It really isn't relevant whether or not you're dealing with hardships as a result of your content creator career, which was built off of you stealing a bunch of other people's work and using that to enrich yourself. It isn't relevant at this particular juncture. No one cares about whether or not you or YouTubers generally are, are struggling with people being weird to you on the internet when you are currently trying to address and have made a video to address severe allegations of your own wrongdoing. It is a distraction. It is an attempt to pull the heartstrings of people. And I'm not saying that it's... As you know, I've talked about this subject myself. I'm not saying there's never a time that's appropriate, but there's a fucking time and place, okay? If somebody walks in on you having fucking shot somebody with a gun and you're holding a smoking gun and they go, oh my God, you killed them. And then you go, I can't believe, I can't believe that you would accuse me of a crime. When I was a kid, I watched a scary movie about murder, and for my entire life, I've been traumatized by the idea of murder. And you just said, <laughs> you just triggered me. And then you say, yeah, but didn't you just murder that guy? I can't believe you'd say that again. Come on. <sighs> by Nick. Nick lost three years worth of work when everything on the channel was taken down. And that's simply not fair to Nick. He worked hard writing those videos and deserves to have something to point to when he's looking for new writing work. I've also done some heavy editing on other videos that did contain other people's writing. Um, breaking it down to only original content, again, so that Nick has an actual portfolio of work. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, revenue from these will be going to the H Bomber Guy team to be sent out to the- As far as I can tell, yes, the content warning section is over, but he hasn't exactly, he hasn't ac actually done a good job of clearly delineating when that's going on. So I don't, I can't make any promises, but as far as I can tell, he's done talking about it. The writers I plagiarized from or donated to charity. However, it works out in the end. These edited videos will be going back up on the channel in the next few days, I think, um, along with two completed video essays that we didn't actually get to release before everything happened. There's also- Jupiter Siren says, why would Nick want their name anywhere near James Stuff? Nick already completely 
uh, as had said, I want nothing to do with any of these projects. I'm ashamed that any of this even happened to this degree. I denounce all of these responses. I believe the only response is to fairly compensate these people and to give back the money for Talos. That's what Nick said. And if you don't believe me, you guys can go watch my previous video, The First Drama Mama, on the James Summerton Apology, in which we read Nick's own post on his own blog in his own words in which he says all of these things. It's ridiculous. So some recent videos that didn't have any plagiarism that the sponsor asked to be taken down. I, By the way, Emu Anon says, I still have trouble trusting Nick. I don't believe that we should trust Nick. However, and, and I go over this in my other video, I'll restate it here. I don't think you have to trust Nick about his entire involvement in the plagiarism. I do believe it's possible that Nick participated and perpetrated at least some of the plagiarism, but Nick's response has been significantly better, and Nick is not the name and the primary uh, recipient of the of the channel. He's not the face behind the channel. He's not the name who, who the channel is associated with, and he's not the primary recipi recipient of the money, and he's divested himself of the project. James Summerton is currently right now pulling in money on these videos. So you don't have to trust that Nick is being truthful about everything. But um, Nick is the, it, like, it's James Summerton's word versus Nick's word. And the Nick's responses um, go significantly, significantly more in depth and uh, directly address the claims in a way that James's don't. So, yeah. I completely agree with not trusting Nick on certain things, and I agree that it's more than likely, in my personal opinion, that he at the very least participated in some of the plagiarism. How much? Impossible to know. We'll never know the answer to that. That will be basically never, it will be impossible, almost impossible that we would ever know that. However, Nick's response has been significantly better, and Nick is significantly less on the hook for the actual money that's going on here. Nick uses they, them. I apologize. I did not know that. I legitimately did not know that. I Please forgive me for that. I didn't know. I I swear. Wait, so has, did I, have I been mishearing? I, I'm not trying to make an excuse here. That's my bad. I didn't know that. I'll, I'll fix that going forward. And their ads removed. Um, so they'll also be going. Boy, back that up. fucking backfired on you all up without the sponsors obviously and soon i will be releasing a new video written entirely by me properly cited with all sources credited maybe no one will watch it but i hope you do i want to prove that i have the ability to do this without abusing other people's work it's a very different kind of video than i used to make though I'd say it's more of a documentary than a video essay. You won't find my opinions anywhere in there, just cited facts. I'd like to keep making... That's arguably worse. That's arguably fucking... Why would you... That's arguably fucking worse. You're not going to do any original work for it? You're just going to cite other people? This is... Performance art. This is performance art. This is fucking performance art. In videos like these new ones about people and events in gay history and definitive gay movies that you maybe never heard of. Stuff like that. It's actually something that I planned on doing this year anyway. There would be two videos a month. Nick would write a video essay and I would write one of these documentary style videos that would fulfill the two videos per month sponsorship deal that we Okay, I'm I'm getting really tired of this because most of this video has been uh him fucking polishing his fucking knob for the idea the the great film ideas that he had that fell apart for reasons that were totally not his fault and now he's promoing his future work scam artist I this is this is scam artist behavior This is scam artist behavior we had at the time. I have no sponsors now, so probably not going to be two videos a month. It'll probably just be the one, which will give more time. How for about none? You are not prepared to come back to this. How about none? 
I hope I oh, let's continue. We have Research, to finish this before I get angry. I'm already and angry, but and making sure that there is no misinformation in the videos. Uh which I know I know that misinformation made its way into uh, our past videos. You mean you put it in your past videos. It didn't make its way in. The misinformation didn't grow legs and crawl into your script, okay? You put it in there. You put misinformation in there. Arguably disinformation. That was not something that we intended. In some cases, it was information that I was told by people that I considered experts. Um, in other cases, it was information that we had researched. Uh, in other cases, it was things that Nick had learned in university. The point being, it was never malicious. We didn't, we weren't trying to lie about things, despite what a lot of people think. We were not trying to spread misinformation. That was not ever our intention. And that's something else that I want to apologize for. As for my Patreon, everyone can stop worrying about me relaunching it right in time for a billing cycle. That will not be happening. I don't want anyone- You mean, it won't be happening again. You tried to do that, and you got called on that last time, which is in my previous video. If you can, if you don't believe that, yes, he did actually try to reboot his Patreon just in time for a billing cycle with a lousy, embarrassing excuse. So he's saying he won't do it again. One who either doesn't know about the plagiarism or simply forgot to unsubscribe to get billed. So I'm going to start from zero. I have put together a new Patreon account. So if you want to support my documentaries about gay history, fantastic. Honestly. Disgusting. Using this fucking uh, fake fraud apology video to promote your newest fucking scam attempt is disgusting. This is the type of behavior that I, I believe this should haunt him. His new Patreon should be full of people warning anybody who would even think about subscribing to it. This is pathetic. This is an attempt to start over again and do the exact same thing by disappearing into the smoke screen of the wider internet as a whole. This is pathetic. Your faith in me after everything means the world to me. If not, I completely understand. Like I said, I've lost your trust. I'm going to work my ass off to earn it back, though. And I know for some of you, I'll never be able to do that, but I'm going to try anyway. You know, there's a link in the description to the Patreon if you want to join it, where you'll be able to see the two yet to be released videos right now, as well as, you know, take part in other stuff that will be on there, like a book club, podcasts, uh, voting on upcoming videos, all the usual Patreon stuff. But this video is not about promoting myself. This video is about me apologizing. It, but what? Your apologies have been half-hearted at best. You apologized for misinformation making its way into your video. You apologized for, uh, for, 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 on behalf of, while blaming somebody else, you apologized on behalf of the mistakes that someone else made. You apologized for being an uwu forgetful person. And then you apologized to Jesse Gender for, I don't even know what. I don't actually remember what the apology for to Jesse Gender actually was. It was vague, incredibly vague, and then you appended it by implying that members of her community went after you and threatened your life. Dude, this is fucking pathetic. This is a this is legitimately most of the video has been excuses 
a, a, a sales pitch for your film ideas and now a sales pitch for your new fucking Patreon. This is pathetic. And I am incredibly sorry. It was never my intention. Yes, exactly. And as Qberry Shortcake says, it was an apology that Jesse Gender did not accept. For anyone to feel hurt or left out or excluded, it was never my intention to spread misinformation. And I'm really, really sorry that that happened. And you know, as, as much as I've tried to explain myself in this video, you know, the memory issues, the ADHD, um, the personal things that were going on in my life with my mom getting sick and then dying and trying to make sure that my dad was okay following that and everything. Those aren't excuses. There is no excuse for what I did. There are lots of people who make videos on YouTube. There are lots of people who make podcasts, TV shows, movies, documentaries, who have shit going on in their lives that's very stressful. And they don't plagiarize people's work. There is no excuse for what I did. For everything that happened. Then why did you make a 40 minute video with excuses instead of uploading a, a 20 minute apology in which you apologize directly to each of the people that you stole from, link them in the comments and send money to them that you stole from them? How about that? Why didn't you fucking reach out and actually coordinate with H Bomber guy to, 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 to make your, to, to make things right with your, with those you stole from? Why did you make a 43 minute full video full of excuses? This rings very hollow. And also, why didn't you put this at the fucking beginning of the video before you pitched your fucking Patreon? Whether it be with my mom or the memory issues, there was something I could have done to mitigate that. There's nothing I could have done about my mom getting cancer, but knowing my patrons. No one is mad at you about you having difficulties because of your mom or because of your memory issues. Nobody is mad at you for going to the hospital for having suicidal thoughts. No one is mad at you for any of that. No one has even brought those things up. What they're mad about is the things that you did wrong which you come up with excuses for. As I did, in hindsight, I'm pretty damn sure that if I had said, guys, I need to step away for a couple of months to deal with this. I don't think a whole lot of people would have fled the Patreon. A part of me thought they would at the time because I catastrophize, but I really don't think that would have happened. Even in the very beginning when I was like, oh, I got to get as many videos out as possible. If I had said to those people who subscribed to the channel early on, you know, for the next video, I want to make sure that it's fully correct. And I want to make sure that, you know, it's as high quality as it can possibly be. I, I don't think anyone would have, you know, unsubscribed or not watched the next video because it didn't come out a couple of weeks after the algorithm decided that I was important for some reason. I convinced myself of these things, but I don't think in hindsight, looking at it, I don't think any of that would have happened. And so there is no excuse for the misinformation, and there is certainly no excuse for the plagiarism. I fucked up. No. You see, you did not fuck up. You didn't fuck up. I wanted, I want to see him say, I want to see him admit, I did this thing to this person. I put this misinformation in this video. Not, oh, guys, I fucked up because I was under so much stress. Can't you, can't you sympathize with me? Please sign up to my new Patreon, guys. I promise it won't happen again. Just give me more money. Uh, come on. God, this is so bad. Bad. I stole people's words and thoughts and opinions that they worked incredibly hard writing. Who? Who? 
if you really wanted to apologize, you name the people you stole from. You make it right to the victims. You don't just vaguely. This is, by the way, this is the closest thing we've actually gotten to a real apology in this entire video. This part right here is the first time he's actually saying a version of what he actually did, and it's as vague as can be. ...and publishing and finding someone to publish their thoughts and opinions and research, hard research that they had done. And, you know, in some cases, I put them their names in the opening credits, which I thought was fine. But and now he's watering it down immediately. He's immediately watering it down. Like I said, I've spoken with some of these people now, and I understand why that was not okay. Because putting someone's name in the opening credits, you know, okay, here's a list of people. Here's, you know, seven or eight people who are, even if it was, you know, everyone, even if it wasn't, you know, taking giant chunks of their work, paragraphs at a time, even if it was just a sentence here or there, putting their name in the opening credits doesn't tell anyone where their work is in the video. Nobody can say, oh, I really liked that opinion, or wow, that's a really, you know, smart observation. I want to read more from this person. And then, you know, to find something you found interesting, you have to go play detective. And so... No! No! You don't have to go play detective. Because they thought you did it, and so they watched more of your shit. That's the craziest part about all this. No, they didn't have to go play detective. People heard it coming from your mouth with no fucking... Not even so much as a fucking citation. And they thought it was you that said it, and they gave you money for it. Money which you are not giving to the people you took it from. Oh my God, this is pathetic. Yes, just putting their name in the opening credits was wrong. I thought it was cool and, you know, cinematic, but it was wrong. Citations should have been done properly. There should never have been just chunks of text being put into videos. There were times, like with uh, the Queer History of Hollywood, videos that I released this past spring. They were based directly on The Celluloid Closet by Vito Russo, the book, not the documentary. I expanded on it quite a bit, but it was based directly on Vito's work, and I credited him in the opening credits. And I thought it was okay to just do that because the book was out of print, and Vito had passed away, unfortunately, from HIV complications due to HIV and AIDS. And I looked at it more as extending his legacy, making sure that people knew about the work that he did. But I don't think I ever mentioned his name in those videos. He was, like I said, his name's in the opening credits. But I don't think I ever verbally mentioned his name. Someone who I have so much respect for, who's kind of an idol of mine, and I never mentioned his Huh. I love how this is framed as he's just like reflecting. I can't believe that I did that. Oh, oh, I can't believe it. No, dude, you wanted to wear his fucking skin. You wanted credit for his experiences. You wanted credit for what he wrote from his heart. And you got it. You got that. And now you're sitting here going, oh, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Please support my future endeavors. I promise I'll do better. Name. It wasn't because I didn't respect him or anything like that. And it also wasn't because I wanted people to think that this was all me. Again, if, if that was the case, I wouldn't have put his name. In the, in the credits. I never wanted people to think that this was all me. So that's actually one of the videos I want to make. I want to make a documentary style video talking about Vito. How about this? How about this, bro? How about you give the money to somebody else to make that? If you really care about this guy that much, the guy you self enriched off of, give the money that you took to somebody else and let them make that movie. 
Let them make an original movie paying tribute to this guy and keep your fucking name off it because your name is like a smear of shit right now. Everything you put your name on will be worse for it. You making a video about anybody is going to degrade their legacy because of this shit. Because of the way you've responded to this, because of the way that you behaved, because of your inability to even tell the truth for five fucking seconds. So, and his life and everything that he accomplished, because he didn't just write the celluloid closet, he did a lot more than that. He's someone that people should know about. Obviously, people can research him, uh, there's books about him. But I know, you know, it's easier to sit down and watch a 20 or 30 minute YouTube video than it is to read a book. I'd like to make a video about Vito Russo, properly cited and not just, you know, copy pasted from a book. I want to do the work. I want to prove, not just to you, but to myself, that I can do the work. And that's why I've started making these documentaries, working on these. I can't... I can't really put into words how sorry. When he says, I've started making these documentaries, we know what that means from previous examples. We know that that means he thought he's thought about what it would be like to make them. So don't hold your breath. Anybody out there who's been fooled such thus far, don't hold your breath. Because uh, we already know that, uh, you know, he started making about five other movies. And now that he's broken it down, what that actually meant was that he was closing his eyes and going like this. <sighs> and little veins were popping out on his forehead and his little hair was going and then he went oh wouldn't it be so cool if i did that oh that's too much for me i am i've tried i've tried writing like a blog entry to say that i was sorry for about two months now and i just can't I can't get across how sorry I am. And I know actions speak way louder than words. And I hope with my actions that I can show you. Know what, you know what would have spoke louder than words? If you had actually reached out to H Bomber Guy before you made this shitty video in which you pitch your new Patreon. You, that I am sorry. I'm sorry to everyone I plagiarized. I'm sorry to everyone I've hurt. I'm sorry to people who feel lied to. I'm sorry to people who feel like I abused the queer community. It was never my intention. Again, I'm sorry to Jesse. There were actually several other YouTubers who uh, were very nice to me, but I feel like with everything that went down, Jesse, Jesse is the one that I should apologize to the most. I'm sorry for the people who felt scammed who thought that tello the people who felt scammed the people who were scammed who you scammed this was a grift it was not it is not i am very sorry bullshit 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 and i hope given time i'm sorry there is no way that i can let this fucking fly in its current condition this is the most blatantly false obviously manipulative attempt to wheel in the few people in his audience who are committed enough emotionally, psychologically, parasocially to consider it possible that it would be a good idea to continue giving him money. That's what this is aimed at. This is aimed at vulnerable people in his audience. None of these are apologies. He just listed a bunch of things. That, I'm sorry you felt like I did this. I'm sorry you felt like I stole from you. I'm sorry you felt like I lied about what was going on. No, dude, you did. It's verifiable. We just did it in this response. We proved that you weren't telling the truth about Telos. We proved that you weren't telling the truth. You're retelling conflicts with what you wrote in your Indiegogo. Is this worse than the last apology? Yes. Yes. And my actions proving it. That you can believe me.
That was pathetic. I, I didn't think that it could get worse than his last apology, but it did. It did. I, I, I can't believe that, I can't believe that he tried to pitch a new Patreon in the apology for, in the apology video. After all of that, it, all he's thinking about is how to make more money. And I, and I mean it, he's trying to target vulnerable people in his audience. This is scammer shit. This is him trying to, to find marks, people who are psychologically or emotionally vulnerable in his audience and manipulate them into subsidizing his shitty lifestyle. My God. He doubled down on blaming Nick he doubled down on blaming random life circumstances and making excuses. His apologies at the end were vague. I'll admit he dialed in a little more on actually saying the words. But he also said you felt like you were plagiarized. You felt like you were stolen from. Which negates it all. They didn't feel like that. They were. Now this is an interesting one. So Lily Simpson is a trans YouTuber. Um, Lily Simpson's had a lot of success doing long form video essays about uh, basically queer topics in various television shows. Lily Simpson tweeted this out earlier today. So James Somerton just put two videos on his Patreon that he finished right before the H-Bomber Guy video dropped. He subscribed to my channel a month before the plagiarism video, and I have a video about trans stuff in Bob's Burgers. I wonder. The queerness of Bob's Burgers. It's even titled like your videos. Now, of course, we don't have verification on this yet, but let's just say that's mighty suspicious. And I hope that somebody who did get access to that video would be able to check that out and find out. All right, so there's one more thing I want to do before we finish, finish off and do our little last analysis on all of this, our takeaways. I do want to watch at least some of Jesse Gender's response. So this is Jesse Gender's response video to the apology offered by James Somerton. Let's see. We're not going to watch. Hey the there, interweb. We're not going to watch the whole thing because it's very long. But we're going to watch. We want. I want to hear at least the basics. I want to give Jesse an opportunity. Fifty minutes is a little too long for us to cover the whole thing on. But I want to hear this. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so this is not a video that I expected to be <laughs> spending my time making today. Uh, but having sat with it for a little while this morning, I've decided that I do want to address it. And that is uh, to talk about James Somerton's latest apology video that he released uh, as of the, the morning that I'm filming this, where he spends uh, a decent chunk of time at the first few minutes of the video, uh, not only talking about me, but uh, apologizing to me directly for um, some stuff that happened between the two of us about a year or so ago, even before the uh, plagiarism accusations came out from H Bomber Guy. And frankly, I, I've debated whether I wanted to say anything at all in response to that, mainly because, you know, I've made two videos about James Somerton on this channel, um, one directly about his sort of plagiarism accusations that were leveled against him after the H Bomber. Look, I don't, listen, to those of you in chat, I recognize some of you are embroiled in strange and parasocial dramas about various creators. But what we're trying to figure out here is Jesse Gender's response to involvement in the James Somerton apology video. So I would appreciate it if you would just for a moment stay the fuck on topic. For just one minute, can you motherfuckers stay on topic? Behave, fucking think for just one second, think. 
You know, we have an um, we have an emoji in chat that says, think imps, do that. Think for just one second, okay? Guy video, and then another one in response to his um, apology video that he released before, where he discussed his um, and content warning here. He discussed his um, suicidal ideation and, and uh, going into the hospital. And frankly, I wanted those to just be the end of my discussion on this because obviously I've had feelings broiled up in this, but I I'm conflicted about the whole thing of like just becoming drama and all of that jazz. And so you know, I kind of figured if he was going to make another apology, I was just going to let other people take it. But considering the fact that he spent the beginning of this apology video talking to me directly. It led to me ultimately having some really conflicted feelings that I, I really want to present to everybody because I think if I don't say them, then I don't think anyone's really gonna dive into it because I, I am very conflicted on how he not only uh, discusses the, the apology, but also where he sort of places the discussion of me within a video where he is apologizing, presumably uh, towards everybody, um, and uh, about the plagiarism that he, he's accused of and admits to in this apology video. So I want to get into all of that, and I think the best place to start is going to be just me giving a brief rundown from my perspective of the stuff between the two of us, so that then I can kind of give a better uh, discussion about what he talks about in this video. So uh, to go back just to my association with James Summerton initially is, you know, he and I had a couple cordial Twitter DMs um, way back a few years ago as he was growing as a content creator. Um, this is something that I do fairly regularly. Like I, I have a lot of different, you know, DMs and messages and associations with a lot of, you know, queer folks in the YouTube community and a few other folks. I, I try my best to um, be at the very least cordial or even create like uh, friendships or relationships, professional relationships um, with uh, other people here on YouTube because I think that that's important to do uh, not only for just like career wise stuff, but I think, you know, I'm someone who talks about, you know, trying to create collective action, who tries to talk about trying to uplift other marginalized voices and to work with other marginalized voices. And so for me, I try to, you know, reach out and be like, hey, I, I like your work. Let's, you know, talk. How you doing? Let's, can we collaborate? Or can we, you know, buttress each other up? Like just trying to do that work. I think that's important part to do, not only as I'm just a creator generally, but especially in our sort of like sphere of uh, talking about like marginalized queer issues, LGBTQ issues, um, left, uh, leftist issues, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, I had a few DMs uh, in that way. And then I also, you can even see evidence of this in some of my videos that are still up. And I've, I've tried to go back and delete some of them because um, it's just made me uncomfortable uh, having him in my videos. But in a few of my videos, I have um, said, hey, you should check out this video by James Summerton uh, because I think it's good and it's a, on a related topic to whatever I'm talking about in this video. James Summerton pointed out in his own video on Disney, which is linked below, this era for Disney continued well beyond the Hays Code. Again, this is something that I tried to do in a lot of my videos. I tried to prop up other creators' works and sort of cite them or point uh, other people towards them uh, to help uh, other creators, you know, get audience. And again, start connecting people in my audience to their audience and, you know, getting people to like intermingle um, and, and, and learn from other people beside myself because I think that's an important thing to do. I, I try to do that all the time. And James was someone who uh, I tried to do that with. Um, I tried to, I, I put it, several of his uh, videos, uh, just citations to his videos or, or sort of calls to action to go and check out his videos in my videos. And so that's sort of where we were at. We never were like super close or had like long talks. It was very, um, very cordial uh, and very like, you know, one off sort of things. Like he did a quote read in uh, one of my videos and things like that. At a certain point, I have to be kind of careful here because, you know, I, I do have an NDA with Nebula, so there's only so much I can particularly say. Um, but at one point, you know, I, I knew he was aiming to get on Nebula and I was on Nebula myself uh, at the time. So I wanted to be able to, to, to you know, help that. So I, something I spoke about uh, publicly elsewhere, I believe he mentioned in one of his videos that he was uh, looking to get on Nebula or something. And it wasn't the left on red line that he had in one of his videos. He said, I le Nebula left me on red at one point. Um, so it's was before that, but he sort of mentioned something about Nebula somewhere, I forget exactly the context. And so I uh, actually reached out to him and said, hey, there's this Discord server uh, that, you know, Nebula folks are on. It's a Discord server that has nothing to do with Nebula, but the, you know, there's this, it's a creator. Uh, so it was a creator Discord. It doesn't even exist anymore. I don't think I haven't been on there in forever. It may still or not. Uh, but anyways, at the time it was like, oh, there's Nebula folks on there that I know, you know, be on here. It's a nice place to connect with other people. I got on there. And so I got him an invite to that server and uh, said, you know, Nebula folks are on there, connect with them. Um, and to my knowledge, he never did. And then what upset me later on is him saying, you know, uh, Nebula left me on red uh, in, in a video, implying that he had reached out to Nebula and never heard anything back. I can't speak to what actually happened between him and Nebula. Uh, I do know a little bit more about that story, but again, there's uh, an NDA. Um, but from what I can tell you uh, publicly is that like, I know that he did not reach out to anyone at Nebula through that Discord server that I intentionally set him up to to go and, and see. Whether or not he reached out to them in other forms or venues or things like that, I, I cannot say for numerous different reasons. But my goal was um, overall to, you know, try to help him get on Nebula because I, I certainly want to, you know, I want to queer up Nebula. Like, Nebula is already very queer. It has a bunch of LGBTQ folks on it, um, but I, I want to always make it queer. That is always my goal. I'm here to make things that I'm a part of as queer as they possibly can be because um, that is something that is very uh, personal to me and I, and I liked James's work um, at the time and, and wanted to, to, you know, help him. That was something that he 
he was interested in. And I've done that for other creators beyond James. It wasn't just James specifically. So when he said that Nebula left me on red, um, I got kind of upset at that, but I, I let it go. Um, you know, I never said anything publicly about that, but it was sort of like a sort of maybe glance sideways at him um, for sure. And then what really annoyed me was he did a tweet, and this is sort of what sparked off the the sort of s the stuff that he was sort of apologizing me for, was he did a tweet that was, um, I'm paraphrasing here, I may have it saved somewhere and I'll pop it up on, on screen if I have it, um, but he said something along the lines of, you know, Nebula uh, does not have any queer content on it and, you know, it's 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 upsetting that Nebula is not interested in talking to me. It was something, it was something along those lines, um, which I got upset about, um, and I know several other queer creators on Nebula got upset, I'm not going to name them because it's not for me to tell the story, but I know that other queer creators on Nebula were upset by that because like there are numerous queer creators on Nebula. Um, you know, there, there's not just me, there's Abigail Thorne, there's Princess Weeks, there's Maggie Mae Fish, there's 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 a ton of queer people on the Cat Black. And also this is not for me to get upset about, but he replied to a tweet that also implied that Nebula didn't have any black content creators on the platform, which again I cannot speak for black content creators on Nebula, but I do know black content creators on Nebula who were upset by that. You know, I, I was upset of that and you know blame my my neurodivergent brain. Um, but I was sort of like, no, that's not cool. Um, because in my mind it's like he has a fairly large LGBTQ audience and if he's out there saying you know oh nebula doesn't have queer audiences that's to me saying like you are you are you are erasing that we exist on that platform and you are turning your your queer audience against a platform that is helping to buttress up queer people i mean like nebula is literally paying for a large part of my sci-fi film identities this is before that but like they're, they're they, they have been doing a lot of work to prop up queer voices in many ways along with many other uh communities voices to um you know that i can't speak for but you know i, I know that that's something that is part of their goal and so to to take your audience and say nebula is is not listening to queer people when there are queer people on that platform it's it's harming us like that's 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 directly harming queer people in my opinion because you're saying they don't have me on there and thereby it's not a queer platform and thereby like harming the queer people that are on okay i'm sorry i don't have a whole lot to add to this and i i do feel like um like i'm 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 getting a little lost in qualif qualifications of a lot of these statements um but um, I'm gonna try listening just a little longer and hopefully we'll find it. I don't wanna listen to a full 50 minute video about this. I just wanted to see if we could get the basics of what James Summerton was referring to in his apology. On that platform by turning your queer audience potentially against that platform that, you know. Jesse's part of the apology is about 30 minutes in. Okay. All right. Let's check that spot. Let's check that timestamp. I'm not trying to lose context here, but we know the basic backstory of the situation. Specifically, and uh, they're uh, and they're kind of two different things. So I want to focus first on the apology itself, and then kind of focus on the second thing that I have an issue with that will lead into a, like a larger discussion on the rest of his apology video. And this is me uh, in editing mode, and I think I just want to put his entire uh, apology to me here, just so that to give context for what we're going to talk about in a second. And uh, I'm going to the We just watched this part. I want. Like this is next. This is me just being overly empathetic watching this footage. Uh, but I want to say this up front before I get into the next part that I recorded earlier, where, which I recorded with some distance from having watched it this morning, um, which is to say, like this does come across as very sincere, and I and I. I Really? Oh, no. Okay. We're all entitled to our own opinion opinions. I guess we're all entitled to our own opinions. Okay, if you say so. And, and it might even be completely sincere. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being too empathetic. Uh, because what I'm... I will say I'm not your friend. I don't know you personally. I think I've had one, maybe, I think one conversation with Jesse Gender, and it was fine. But you're being too empathetic here. Um, th that did not come across to me, nor to most people, I think, that as a sincere apology. And in fact, the fact that he follows it up by trying to to imply that your audience has dangerous people in it who tried to hurt him, as if that's somehow relevant to whether he's apologizing for what he personally did, uh, seems like a dirty move to me. That's just my opinion. Uh, whether Jesse Gender watches this video or not, that's my opinion. 
I'm going to say next is going to kind of like actually talk earnestly about like what I feel about this and I and I stand by all of it but like there's just a part of me that wrestles with it because it's like it does feel earnest and I want and I want to believe that um but as you'll see I, it's difficult for me to do that for what I will now cut back to looking at his apology and what he says to me specifically and about the situation I I have very mixed feelings on that part of it and I think it comes down to just the lack of ability to trust him uh, at this stage of the game, and it's something that he readily admits to uh, in the video that his trust, uh, people's trust in him has been destroyed. Not just because of the situation I just outlined, but because of the stuff with the plagiarism and him having plagiarized from people. Like, it's difficult to trust him on anything he says because of that and how he has framed uh, accusations of plagiarism before. And that kind of goes into this. Like, he has been accused of plagiarism before this, and every time he did, he always claimed, like, oh, they're coming to attack me. Uh, like, H. Bomber guy talked about this in his video. Like, when someone said, you plagiarized my video, James Summerton framed it as, like, they, they are harassing me when that was not the case. They were literally just saying, you plagiarized from me, which was what happened. Again, check out HBR guys for the details on that. So when he discusses the situation, I, I, it just leads me to question whether it is true or not. And I'm not here to say that it isn't true, but I, I just don't have any, I just don't have any ability to trust that it is. And the questions that I have are like, did you actually receive death threats from my audience? Because the, the thing that I remember was that you said like someone's gonna falsely accuse you of sexual assault from my audience. And then it became death threats from my audience. And, and I had assumed that the false accusation of, um, of sexual assault was the thing that you went to the police for. At least that's my remembrance of the timeline events, but I have no proof of that because I wasn't w with James at those times. Um, but that was my remembrance of what he had called the cops on. So he now frames it here that it was the death threat. So like there's an inconsistency in my mind there, but again, that might just be because I don't know the full timeline events from his point of view. So that may actually be the case, but that's like something that weirds me out a little bit. And then also the fact that he has, you know, called people rightfully calling out his plagiarism harassment before makes me then wonder like, were these death threats that he was getting from, supposedly from my audience also real? And I don't know. Yeah, this is a, I'm glad, I'm glad that she brought this up because yeah, he has a history of framing all forms of critique as some form of harassment. He has a, a history, a demonstrable on record history, which we've looked at in previous videos on this of, and also even H bomber guy brought this up. Um, and I believe Todd in the Shadows also brought up examples of this. So these have been fairly well documented of him completely misrepresenting the form of messages directed at him and writing them all off as dangerous threats and all kinds of things. Which again, people online do get very dangerous and weird threats from people, but not all criticism comes in that form. And if you're going to bring that thing up, especially in the context of, of, of something like this, it's important to, to have your ducks in a row and to make sure that there's a time, that the time and place is right to be talking about those things. Anyway, let's continue. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say that it didn't happen. Like, cause if it did, it's fucking awful. And I condemn that. So I, I want to be very clear on that, but I, I, I just can't trust him that that's the case because of everything that has gone on. Um, and it sucks because I want to. I want to believe that he is being honest and sincere in, in his presenting. He's not. I'm sorry. I do not believe he's not. And I believe there is evidence that shows that he is not. Um, he words his, 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 his message in a way that is designed to, 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 to promote certain emotions. But what is evidenced in what he's actually talking about and the structure of his so-called apology, there is no sign of genuine apology there present. This is just my message, my opinion that I want shared to Jesse. Of his view of what happened. Um, but I, I just can't. And again, like in my mind, and the reason that I have to like present it this way, and the reason, and it just leads me down to like other questions as well of like, he states also at one point that someone tried to falsely accuse him of sexual assault, um, which is weird to me because he says it was a woman who did that and he is a publicly known gay man. So it's just this weird thing of like, why would someone falsely accuse him of sexual assault in my name if they also know that he's a gay man? That just seems like something weird to do, to, 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 to have uh, someone like say, ah, I'm a woman, I'll falsely accuse this gay man of sexual, it just feels weird. And like, again, this is like, not something I wanna go down the rabbit hole of, but it just like leads me to be like, that just feels like a weird story for someone to have come at you with if, if, if it was true.
And it like also leans into this whole thing of like the biases in our society of like women making false accusations against men. And it feels like it plays into that, but it, it, and it's just like, it just, if it's a made up story, that just, it, it, it fits into that. But if it's real, then it's like, that's what a weird thing for someone to have done. Um, not even just like the part of it being like death threats fucking are awful and weird that anyone would do that. But like this specifically is an accusation. And so it just, it sends me into the spiral of like, I don't know what to believe in this situation. And I guess what I have to say is like, before I could even begin to think of accepting an apology, um, what I would want is to see the police report that he says that he filed. Because if he did file a police report to, I, I don't know how it works in Canada, I know he's in Canada. Uh, in America, I know that if to file a false police report comes with a lot of uh, legal uh, problems. So uh, I don't know if that's the same in Canada, but I would presume that would be the case. Okay, I think we've gotten the, me the message. So while Jesse wants to believe that James was being uh, was being genuine. Uh, she does not currently believe that that's the case. Is that is that I think that's a fair analysis, right? Is that is that does is that seem fair? That there's too much too much going on in this situation to be able to trust it. And therefore, to me, that does not sound like an accepted apology. And it sounds like the apology, the quote unquote apology directed at Jesse Gender was dubious enough and suspect enough that Jesse does not feel comfortable accepting it in its current form. I think that's a fair analysis of what we got from Jesse's video and watching uh, James's own video. Jesse also does does also state that James didn't name or blame her in the police report, but if the police told him not to talk to her, how did they know about her? That is an interesting that is an interesting question. I mean, Jesse said that she didn't see the police report. Um so yeah. So maybe maybe she doesn't know that. Maybe that's just a claim that he made. But it obviously then he's lying. So if he said that he didn't name her, but then he did because the police told him not to talk to her, that means he's just lying again. We have another example of him telling dishonest mistruths. Okay. Now is time for the portion of the Drama Mama video where we talk about our read of the situation. We've looked at some various supporting evidence. We've looked at the evidence itself. We've watched through uh, the receipts that are available. And now we have to sit down and think about it and come to a conclusion. But I'm gonna be completely real. And I apologize for this at the beginning of the video that I knew that it was going to be very difficult to do our usual fairly impartial read of the situation because of the previously existing context. And I think, I don't think that there's a whole lot of, there's not a lot of question as to what's going on here. To me, this apology video comes off as incredibly insincere and manipulative. Um, the structure of it is designed to front load an emotionally manipulative message that focuses on the hardships that he has gone through. It centers him as a, as a, as a grieved, um, central character who made mistakes as a result of the hardships going on in his life. It center, it, it puts a ton of blame on Nick with no evidence of those claims, just zero evidence provided whatsoever that Nick did any of the things that James accused him of, or accu accused them of. Um, James uh, uh, basically apologizes for being forgetful. He apologizes for people feeling bad. He apologizes for vaguely fucking up and taking from people who he doesn't name. We know that he hasn't reached out to H Bomber guy 
and he uses this video to uh, glorify the projects that he was working on in the past and to set himself up for a new Patreon with new projects for the future. This is a clear attempt to uh, dispel as much of the controversy as he can so that he can go on making more money without ever actually having dealt with any of the real things that he did. And it's pathetic. And it's manipulative. And I think it's important to call it for what it is. A manipulative attempt to further uh, to to further rope in vulnerable members of his audience into subsidizing his future endeavors in dishonesty. I don't believe there's any reason to trust a single word out of his mouth. He does not provide any evidence or proof of anything that he says. You would think that if he was going to be doing a measured response to H. Bomber Guy's four-hour heavily cited and evidenced mo uh, video, that he would actually come with some evidence of anything that he claimed, but he didn't. It's all just his personal story filled with his feelings on the matter about how sad and hard his life is and how you should feel bad for him and how he's going to do good things in the future and how he's going to promote queer people in the future. He is functionally attempting to restart the grift. What he focused on in this video was trying to sell you the idea that he's an ally that what he's going to do in the future is learn from his mistakes and continue to, to help trans and gay and queer people. He's trying to reboot the grift. Now, I don't think he's going to succeed. And in fact, I hope he doesn't succeed. I hope my video and my analysis here contributes to people not allowing him to succeed on this. And that's not because I believe he needs to be punished. I don't think that I don't think that punishing him is what is important here at all. What I think though is preventing him from manipulating people further. He has not proven that he is even able to deal with correcting the mistakes that he currently made or owning up to them in an honest manner. This is not a person who should be trusted. His word should not be trusted. He should not be given money other people's hard-earned cash to make things when he cannot be trusted with truthfulness on those things. Especially trying to reboot the name under his own brand. To me, this screams like the behaviors of a manipulative con artist desperately attempting to continue to gather fame because he is obsessed with his own fame He's obsessed with being seen as an intellectual person, as a contributor to the history of the queer world. He likes that idea. He loves being seen that way. It's very, very obvious in the way that he presents uh, everything about his work. And I think he wants to continue doing it. And I think he's hoping that this will dupe people. And I don't think it should. And I hope that people will continue to remind others that he is not trustworthy, that he has not proven even one thing to make him trustworthy. Now, let's look right now. We got the James Summerton X Patreon. I think is what it's called. James of Telos. Now, unfortunately, this is his new Patreon. James Summerton X, James of Telos. And he has 11 paid members already. Now it's possible that, mo that most of these members are people trying to get in to be able to document his stuff. But even still, the fact that there are 11, the, the fact that there are 11 paid members is both a tragedy and a comfort. It's a tragedy because it's sad that anyone at all would be paying money after that heinously lazily slapped together manipulative apology but it's also encouraging knowing that that apology video let me just double check real quick i want to make sure i get the numbers exactly right hold on let 
Let's just see it real quick. The James Summerton Apology has 140,000 views in which, and the, by the way, just, just so we're clear here, the second line in the description is a promo for his Patreon. If there's any reason to, if there's, if there's anything that convinces you, if the video didn't convince you that this was a shallow attempt to make more money, that should. The fact that the Patreon is, is the, is one of two lines of text in the fucking video response. But 140,000 views on that video, and he only managed to get 11 patrons out of it, should say that his reputation is destroyed. But there's a problem, of course, that must be considered, which is the fact that his reputation might not stay destroyed. He's hoping that with this very soft rebrand, this shift away from the original Patreon, that over time people will forget and start giving him money again. And maybe that nobody will go and do their due diligence to find out if he actually changed his habits. He might just get a little sneakier with his plagiarism. We have no reason to believe that he won't. And that's concerning. Again, I believe that this is the sort of thing that needs to stick with him. Until he really, really becomes serious about fixing things, and not just fixing things, but stepping away from this type of work. I'm not saying he shouldn't be able to work as a marketing person. I'm not saying he shouldn't be allowed to work as a camera operator. But as a writer, making historical claims, making factual claims, as a writer attempting to make an imprint on queer history, he should not be allowed near any of that because his actions are an active detriment. We've seen that they're an active detriment. We've seen that what he does is take from others for himself and then create a mess that makes it very, very difficult to track anything down. Dark Slime Zero points out, he doesn't direct anyone to the people he plagiarized, to H Bomber Guy or anyone, just a straight link to his Patreon, despite saying he didn't want anyone that he does, that doesn't know about the, despite saying he didn't want anyone that doesn't know about the plagiarism. His actions do not add up. That is correct. None of, all of his actions add up to me very clearly to say he wants to make a living again. He wants to continue living comfortably. He doesn't want to sell the expensive camera. He doesn't want to have to make a change to his livelihood. He doesn't want to have to make any deep changes. He just wants to put out a smoke screen so that people will slowly start forgetting and he can start raking in the cash again. And unfortunately, people have gotten away with that in the past. Will you cover it if Nick responds? Yes, I will. If Nick responds, I will cover it. As long as it's a substantial response. If Nick just responds by saying, you know, I don't like this, then probably not. But, but yes, if Nick responds, I will cover it. I don't know what else there is to say about this. This apology is worse than the first one. Um, it's worse than nothing. It, it's actively worse than nothing because, uh, especially because, especially because we know he didn't reach out to H Bomber guy about the fund. It is a, uh, that is just a level of brazen dishonesty, brazen scam artistry that is, uh, it's hard to even reckon with, you know, when you look at that and you go, oh my God. Like some people really will just lie straight to your face all the way to the end. They will, that is, it is like, you know, you know, it reminds you of gaslighting, you know, where it's, it's like incontrovertible proof can be in front of them and they'll be like, no, the sky is red. It's a, uh, it's a bad thing, you know? And, and the reason why I cover something like this is because James Summerton didn't just, he didn't just steal. He didn't just steal and self-aggrandize. He stole and self-aggrandized off of people who were more vulnerable than him. He put himself at the top of a pile of people who already struggle. And he did so in a way that it, he didn't just, he didn't just like, 
You know, he didn't just like, like, like parasitize, you know, he straight up just carved it out. He, his videos got mass appeal because of the words of other people. He built a reputation online, which thankfully is now destroyed, that other people deserved. That other people, like, I don't know, it's just, it's so, it's so heinous. The, the example of him talking about the celluloid closet and his inability to just acknowledge that he, it wasn't like an oopsie, oh, I need to reflect on this, that he was clearly and visibly wanted the glory that came from a dead guy's work. It's terrible. It wasn't just like he was pandering. You know, it wasn't like he was just pandering to the tastes of queer people and being a little scummy in the process. He looked for queer people that he could easily steal from, who were doing good work, who deserved to be able to put food on the table and pay their bills and live in comfort with the great and beautiful things that they are contributing to this world. And he contributed that to not, to contributed to that not being able to happen. It's, it's so fucking gross. It's so fucking sickening. I guess that's why I care about it. You know? Anyway, the evidence is all out there. Nothing has changed. Literally nothing that he said in either of his apology videos changes anything. He didn't address meaningfully anything in H Bomber Guy's video. He didn't address anything meaningfully from Todd in the Shadows video. He didn't address anything meaningfully from my first apology video. Nothing. It was all just dodge, 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 and emotional manipulation. And I want to be clear. I'm not saying that sad things didn't happen to him. Like, I'm not doubting that some of the things that he said that were horrible and sad actually happened. It's just that none of them matter in the context of what the discussion that's being had about his behavior like, it, none of them matter in that context. They don't matter at all in that context. He's providing emotionally charged context that doesn't directly refer to what's going on. And people would be open to hearing about his struggles. If he had started, you know, if the Telos Pictures thing, the, the Indiegogo, had gone a different direction. Let's say he doesn't do the Indiegogo, and instead he says, damn, guys, imagine if he booted up his stream and said, hey, everybody, shit's been really hard. I've been fighting with an insurance company over my mom's life insurance policy, and they're trying to basically rip, rip me off. And that's making things really difficult. And my mom left me money to try and make a movie with, and I don't know if I'm gonna get that. And then he said, Okay, it, I'm not getting the money. I got ripped off. I got ripped out of the out of the funds, you know. And then he said, "I want to do an Indiegogo to make a movie, one movie, not a production company with eight movies, not a production company meant to make queer art happen." He just said, "I want to run a fan Indiegogo to try and make a movie," and he wrote about it like that. I don't know. I, I again. I have a lot of sympathy for film projects being difficult, for artistic projects failing, okay? God knows I've had a million of them, okay? I get it. I know it firsthand, and it's painful too. But there's a whole world of difference between running a crowdfunding campaign where you say, hey guys, I wanna try and do this thing, here's what I'm gonna try and do, and succeeding or failing, versus selling someone the world and never even having a drop of it to begin with. I have eight movies lined up that I thought about. And he admits it in this fucking apology video that they didn't even have the films written. They didn't even begun writing them when they had gotten the funding for Telos. They had eight movies or seven movies, whatever number of movies listed on that. How many movies were listed on that Indiegogo? Let me get the number correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was right, seven movies. 
They had seven movies listed on that Indiegogo, and he admitted in this movie that they hadn't even written one yet. My lovely imps, that's all I have to say about James Somerton for now. If there's more updates, we'll follow up as we do here on Drama Mama. But don't worry, the show's not over. I still have a treat for all of you who decide to remain. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you subscribe down below because I would love to have your eyes and ears on my signal. I churn out some truly amazing streams, okay? You know, I don't do I don't do a video essay churn, okay? My grind is I get on this camera and I perform for you all. That's my grind, all right? And I'm rocking it. My fans will tell you. They love what I make. There's 500, over 500 people watching right now, and you could be one of them if you hit subscribe down below, and I would love to have you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching live, stay tuned, because we got a lot of stuff coming. Not a lot, we got a little more.